I walk the earth just as they planned, baptized in fire for my ancient land. The coming curse, your antichrist, I am the watcher's eye. I vindicate and cleanse the earth of all mankind. For many years I've walked among you through the folds of time and space. Kingdoms fall, leaders die as I see fit. I devour souls of those that pose a threat. I walk the earth, another day, the wicked one that comes this way, saving to my own, devil to some, mankind falls, something wicked comes. And that would be episode 110 of The Fluff and Hammer. very poetic for the 110th episode i rather liked that <laughs> it's uh see i'm more of a i'm more of a milk milk lemonade round the corner for just <laughs> I the guy. had you done more as a limerick guy to be on a sunday no that requires a bit more thought and intelligence <laughs> <laughs> i know so poo and i know pp that works i know where they both come from generally <laughs> So, re- you know, really not into, like, the romantics or the beat poets or anything like that. Um, yeah? I, I think you can be romantic with urine and poo, but it just needs to be the right situation, right? <laughs> you can be romantic with uh, urine and poo. My God, there's yeah. a sentence that uh, I wish I'd yeah. known was going to come up beforehand so I could use that as the title. Well, it's it's already gotten kind of fecal already, hasn't it? So you know, Ruff, you're, you're married with a kid. You you have to deal with this oh, yourself, yeah, that's right? True. Oh, no, that's yeah, true. I did not. I always knew. Yeah. When I knew Joseph was on the way, that I was going to deal with a lot of poo and a lot of wee. What I didn't mm-hmm. realize was that mm-hmm. potty training is the devil's own ass pit, and um, I think <laughs> I need an exorcist. <laughs> I don't understand how I shit, to yeah. be honest with you, because pot- <laughs> the power of Christ the power of Christ will get you to sit on your goddamn potty for longer than 30 seconds. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I need an old priest and a young priest. <laughs> you need to get him into reading uh, newspapers, you know, so he stays but, there longer. Oh, God, no. You definitely what I, don't. What I've got him into is watching stop motion <laughs> on YouTube, right? Because they're okay. about five to six minutes long, and it's just about the right amount of time for him to sit there and realize he needs to go. The downside is, <laughs> the downside to it is it. that he started watching the 52 Toys Beast Box a stop motion, and he loves them, which means I have had to buy a Beast Box toy. <laughs> oh, so my oh. God. They're not oh, cheap actually, either. Is this I found like one on sale uh, for AliExpress for three seventy five? Oh, so oh. not not no, a real, a real one, one, right? Is it a real one so. or is it? Oh, okay. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> that's uh, that's not so bad. But uh, as always, I'm Adam. Over there is Andy. Ah. Uh... And over there, summoned within <laughs> the pentagram of pentacles, is George. Hmm. Hello. <laughs> you don't really want something summoned to do that, do you? You'd be disappointed if it was like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> it's a bit like that demon in Witches Abroad, right? <laughs> yeah. There's a... Um... You know, starts out all the sort of like, you know, traditionally demonic and who dares to summon me and then actually gets really fey about it all towards the end. There's a series of books about a demon um, who takes the form of a, a gargoyle and he gets summoned into a the magic circle, and he just sits there going, "Nah, mm-hmm. nah, you've done it all wrong, mate. Nah, you see, because you, because you've done it all wrong, I don't have to do anything you have to say. So I can sit here for as long as you want. <laughs> nah, mate, you've got it all wrong. Brilliant. You've got it all wrong. I mean, really, that's another thing you de- desperately don't want a demon <laughs> to say. You want to have gotten it right. Well, thankfully, this one's. Uh, I'm trying to think what it's called. 
It's by the guy who wrote Lockwood and Co. I but I can't think. Well, it's not. It's not the mything on no, or anything no. like that, is it? Um, it's, no. It's jo- definitely a Jonathan Stroud book. Uh, but mm. I can't. I can't remember. Uh, yeah. No, it's gone. If you, it's if gone. you're interested in quite a fun little series about a demon, um, it's by Jonathan Stroud. Go look it up. You, you'll be able to find it. Also, uh, read Lockwood <laughs> Co. The Netflix series, though decent, completely missed out every single part of my favourite parts. Oh, no. I quite enjoyed the series for what it did, but like you're getting up to something like, yes, <laughs> rat ghost, rat ghost, rat ghost, and you've just bypassed the entire rat ghost. Oh. Oh no! God. <laughs> Did they hint nope, at a rat nope, ghost? They put the, that entire bit of the story out. Oh, wow. Red room, red oh. room, red room, red room. Oh no! Okay, you've just gone past the red room. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> these are all parts of the story which really freaked them. Like, really freaked me out. It's like um, the red room <laughs> is a um, it's a ghost in itself. So the entire room is haunted. Uh, but right, instead of right. there being spectres and ghosts, it takes the form of blood in the ceiling. And it, and it just spans oh. out, and the blood follows whoever's in the room in order to get to them. And it, <laughs> that sounds and kind of the, fun. Uh, it locks the door, and you're just like running around. And they're saying that the, the last time somebody was in here, they were found in the fetal position, and they were unable to unclench her body after death. Because she was so scared. <laughs> and that's like, fucking hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. that is cool. Yeah. Cool concept. Uh, honestly, Lockwood & Co., great books. Um, there's a mm. one, there's a section in a, a haunted shopping mall, and it's just, nope, 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 nope. Don't, don't want to ever deal with that again. <laughs> Anyhow... Um, yeah, to get on topic and to uh, to get on to things, Andy, let's start with ah. you. Right. What have right. you been up to since last we spoke? Lo, these three weeks past. Has it been three weeks? Uh, Has it well, really been that long? Two and a half. But if, if I'd said Oof. it in that tone, Bam. what have you been up to hence these two and a half weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. No. It doesn't exactly it roll doesn't, off the tongue, doesn't. does it? Whence did but- I... Are we talking GW-wise? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, just... You did not no hobby at all. No. Well, not GW-wise. <laughs> the only thing I've been doing is, like, like um, making scenery and terrain for potentially getting back into doing YouTube mm-hmm. videos and oh, wow. using styrofoam and toilet paper and PVC glue and all and that jazz. Uh, and... And a hot <laughs> knife. And a hot knife. I got a hot knife specially for it, which is interesting to use. I, I'm not sure... If I, it was super needed, I probably could. I think it's taken less mm-hmm. time to do with a hot knife, but it's probably mm-hmm. something I could have done without. Uh, but yeah. you know, they're, they're not too yeah. expensive, so it's not too bad. Uh, I've got the bottom part kind of done. I'm just kind of working on uh, the background now. So the the ground's finished. It's just mm-hmm. a background. I'll need to get some um, glue specifically to stick polystyrene together. Aye, aye. Because uh, it's. Uh, Oh, yes, because otherwise it melts, doesn't it? <laughs> it either melts or it doesn't stick. It, it, it's really faffy. Apparently, you yeah. need silicone-based adhesive. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Although, you've got to be careful with that, too. There is some silicone-based glue that will literally just melt. Yeah. Into a puddle. I, I was looking on YouTube, and there's a sticks all, S-T-R-I-X, and then all is one word. Apparently, that does the job. That's all I just right, need yeah. to get I'm some. Yeah. Know, that's Skeletor's cool. nephew. I am Stixor. <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> He's come to visit again. Yep. Skeletor did have a son. It was that, written. That, um, yeah. He had a mohawk. True. Yeah. And I've seen the character designs on that. Yeah. Oh. I can't remember what he was called, um, though. Morhork. <laughs> Morhork. Less that's, hawk. That's presumably with Evil Lynn, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, I can't remember who this yeah, is. Probably was, though. Like, but, you know, I, I, I'm going to infer. So the, it yeah. If I run the right for the the studio bible, if Jai hears this, he'll probably tell me off for getting it wrong. Um, mm-hmm. But if memory serves me right, the series bible would have been that Skeletor didn't really appear, but Evil Lynn did as like a guiding force with the sun. And then it was He Man's son, and oh, it right. was um, Hero was meant to be in there as well. Yeah, uh, Hero. Yeah, and it was a. Uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, 
Well, considering the fact that what we actually got instead was The New Adventures of He-Man, a series that I oh. still don't know if it's any good or not. <laughs> I just look at it and go, it's not. I think you're shit, but I'm not sure. It's it's pretty 90s. The writing's very, very 90s. It's it's quite flat. I'm sure there's some good episodes in there, but mm. I, I watched the, the pilot and like a few episodes after, and it, it really didn't hold my interest too this much. This is the 1990s yeah. show, yeah? Yeah, The New Adventures, oh, oh, where he yes, goes to the God. future. <laughs> It's. I. I. I remember liking it as a kid, but that that may have been because like all big flashy Mm -hmm. ships and magic and lasers and whatnot. It sucks. (laughs) It sucks hard. It doesn't even have like the, you know the, the unspoken campiness Mm -hmm. of the original He Man, which makes it so fun. Um, It doesn't even have that. It's just so Andy. Andy's right. It's really nineties. It's yeah. really like it's like encapsulated nineties frictionless toy catalog. I, I would garbage, say it's not that you know? it encapsulates yeah. the nineties. It encapsulates nineteen ninety. Like the year nineteen ninety. Yeah. It's a absolute pinnacle of nineteen ninety with that French anime style of design and animation. Um yeah. and the way that the the lines are delivered. It is like it's this we- it's so like over yeah. earnest you know and it's like oh and the stories are crap they're really badly written it they're is it is that kind of car- mm. yeah it's that kind of cartoon show where they looked at shows from the 1980s you know the which all uh, very often have sort of stock episodes yeah. you know there's always an episode mm-hmm. where the characters shrink there's always an episode where they're sent back into the past there's always an episode where there's like a freeze ray or something like that where the good guys turn evil or the bad guys turn good there's always those stock episodes and they just rehash them you know in the flattest most boring way imagine did you ever hear about the uh, Bruce Tim and Paul uh, Dan uh, Paul the writers of Batman the animated series anyhow the writer and the uh, designer um, they went into a meeting and they they were asked why there wasn't any of those episodes you know, it's like, well, we've got all these scripts that we can just change the bits around. It's really cheap. Mm. And <laughs> apparently Paul Dini just stood up, walked out, and went, nope. <laughs> this meet <laughs> is over because you're being ridiculous. Yeah. It's it's a thing you really notice if you go back to those cartoons yeah. as an adult. The the cartoons from like the 1980s, early it, 1990s. They are so very often, not universally, but very often they're so generic. It's every episode of Spider-Man and his amazing friends, that's what it is. Because every episode of that season <laughs> is one of those stock episodes where they've just changed the names around. Yeah. And it, it Yeah. I think the one I really noticed for me was when I went back to Thundercats. Yeah. It, it like just exemplifies mm. it. it. It absolutely exemplifies it. Certainly, the first season, there's like nothing original, <laughs> nothing, barring the aesthetics. There's nothing well, there's original. Really... See, I only ever watched like the the first few part of whatever mm. that intro was, and then I never oh, saw anything yeah, else. Um... And then I came back later, uh, and I tried it because everyone was like, "Oh, it's got oh. really good continuity, and it's got all this good stuff." And I was like. I, I came back and I watched it and I was like, I don't know no. what you're talking about. No, it's not. Really it's, not it's a flat 90s show. Yeah, it's a the intro's oh, yeah. good, though. Yeah, the intro's great. The intro's yeah. absolutely There's two good superb. things about Thundercats. One is the intro. The second is the Groom oh, yeah. the Destroyer episode. Because whoever the hell came <laughs> up with that thing decided, well, we're going to just write a horror. <laughs> we're just going to yeah. terrify I mean, kids. It's like There are things to really like. I mean, you know, I, I think like... The, the the setting is great. Third Earth is a great setting, but they don't do anything mm-hmm. with it. <laughs> they do absolutely nothing with it. Some of the backgrounds are gorgeously rendered. If you actually, you know, in some of the episodes, the backgrounds are all painted and they're beautiful. Um, Mumra is a great mm-hmm. villain conceptually <laughs> and aesthetically. But again, they don't well, do anything with him. He's just a bumbling foil, you know. It's like it's one. It's so sad. There's a lot of wasted I opportunity. Remember, there. he becomes much more flat as well when he gets marmot and like. Oh, <laughs> oh then he has to have the Doctor Claw cat, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was remember back in the oil house days. We all hit upon the idea that uh, <laughs> the entire point of Mumra and the Thundercats is it's an old man shouting at kids to get off his lawn. <laughs> It's pretty much, isn't it? It's it's like on a galactic scale, but it's pretty much that. And then when they yeah. went back to it and redid it in a absolutely fantastic, truly 
brilliant sci-fi show. It just got absolutely reamed and uh, taken off the air. Yeah. It's it a is. real shame. That's a real yeah, shame. George, have you been up to any hobby? Hello. Um, not in terms of miniature creation. I've been rather too busy. In fact, if you look behind me, you can see the normal bookshelves are absolutely empty at the moment. That's because I, I've got to pack everything up because my place has been renovated. Um, but I have got, I, it's, it was my birthday mm -hmm. recently and I have, I did. Happy birthday, George. Thank you very much. I managed to get, uh, Mortari on. Yay. Uh, with i'm going to put him together and paint him up probably as a reward you know for get after all of this is done uh, so yeah i got him i've been doing a lot of reading lately still reading uh rereading the infinite and the divine which i <laughs> it's, just, it's, just brilliant. <laughs> it's everything you've heard about that book oh, yeah. is true it's fantastic i have not made up it's or embellished a single thing about that book whenever i've spoken about it it's oh. it's a masterpiece. It really is. It's as absurd as mm -hmm. you've heard. Uh, deliberately, it's a comic masterpiece. It's so yeah. funny. It's so funny. Who would have ever thought Necrons could be this expressive, <laughs> right? I just love it. I love the fact that Orican Orican even points out at one point that Necrons don't smile. They have death mm -hmm. masks, right? And Trazin's death mask is deliberately designed to look like it's smiling. <laughs> it's like so brilliant. It's so brilliant. And the way they like they subtweet one another. <laughs> that's my favorite thing. That's my favorite thing. I love that. I just it just makes me smile always. I like it better when they're yeah. getting on. <laughs> you know? I, I don't know why I like it towards sort of like the middle of the book. There's a there's a sequence where basically they are forced, they're told to get along. They like literally forced to get along under threat of worse than death, <laughs> um, and they kind of have to. And they do they do have moments, don't they? I mean, there's a moment where Orican very reluctantly. He acknowledges that maybe the reason he hasn't killed Trazin yet, because he kind of has the power to do so, is that he likes dealing with a guy on yeah. his own level, a guy who is at least as intelligent as he is. Um, that's cool, right? That's really cool. I like that. There's a lot of character development here for these two, and I, uh, I like it. The, the, I like it a lot. The two things I think I like most about that book is Trazin's practical joke, and all of its ramifications. Um, <laughs> yep. Jesus Christ. And um, just how much you can get into two words when those two words are, you're bastard! <laughs> yeah, they swear at one another a lot, so, don't they? I, I was happy every time we got a, like a you're lot. bastard! Yeah, they, they, they swear at one another a heck mm. of a lot. What I like as well is I, I find myself sort of like slip sliding up and down in between oh, yeah. them. Like, I don't know who I'm rooting for, you know? Um, Orican often is a complete mm -hmm. prick in this, but then so is mm -hmm. Trazin. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I Metaphysically, I'm kind of with yeah. Orican, yeah. you know? Orican's the one who wants to move things on. He's sort of like, you know what? we shouldn't be this we shouldn't be this calcified static race we can evolve to be better than what biotransference has made us we can be beings of energy and light and formulae i kind of love that i do kind of love that on the other hand i i kind of love trazin too because he wants to preserve things he sees a bigger universe right and he has an appreciation for the other things in the universe too i mean you never would have thought it but he kind of likes the other species in the universe he has this kind of academic interest mm. in them like humanity yeah. he They're really appreciates yeah he really appreciates humanity in a way that orican just couldn't give a fig about you know <laughs> orican is like their vermin they're vermin and that's it trazin is like oh well yeah they may be but they've actually spread across the universe and their empire is kind of it, it's getting to the point where it's older than ours was so hmm, let's see right you know they, they have these brief flickering lives and yet they've managed to <laughs> infest every corner of creation of these brief flickering so, lives and yet they spend it ingesting ground up beans yeah, yeah. it's hilarious it is loads of fun 
it is loads of fun. I love it when they're in when they're watching the plays together on that Imperial <laughs> world. And Trazin knows what it Trazin gets everything because he's really mm. invested. He gets everything about these cultures, right? So he, he understands all the references and whatnot. And Oricon no. just doesn't. Oricon is like, so what is this? Is it a farce? I don't get it. And Trazin's like, no, 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 no. The farce is over there. <laughs> And there is actually like a ridiculous sort of like mm-hmm. slapstick fast play going on, you know, which is it, brilliant. Absolutely. It's the fact brilliant. that Orkin kind of starts getting into it. And it's like, no, this is not the play. This is an actual yeah. uprising. We have to leave now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, and, I mean, the, the concept alone. The concept of taking one of the most dour nihilistic races from the 40k universe that's meant to represent a very bleak form mm. of horror and making them into a, a comedy mm. pair, a comedy duo, fantastic, yeah. absolutely fantastic. The use of time as a joke <laughs> as well, that's brilliant because these guys, they're immortal. They, 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 see, they, they literally spend millennia mm-hmm. arguing in this book and it's enormous yeah. fun. It's enormous there's, fun. And there's even touching moments. There's that moment where Trazin has got like a human mm-hmm. helper. Um, and they he mm-hmm. likes him. He does like him. They like one another. It's it's really strange. It's really strange and ambiguous and kind of wonderful. I love both of these characters as a result of this book. Um, both Trazin and Orican are two of the best characters in 40k as a result oh, of this book and then if you um i'll just get it off the, the wall and then on the other hand you've got rain and ruin which oh ooh, my god that is uh that is some horrific horrific horror that's oh. on there. Uh, buy one, get one free on on audible at the moment which ooh. i need to use one of my little I vouchers for at some point in rain and ruin yeah, yeah. Um, look at they that. are very, very, very good. There's a, a sequence in, I think it's in the f- first one, Ruin, where there's just a Necron and he's carving the deeds of each of his soldiers into their metal. And he's doing it to stop himself <laughs> from going insane. Which conjures up the yeah. question, isn't this a sign of insanity? <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the thing with the Necrons, isn't it? That's the fun of them. It's the fact that, like, biotransference is really mm-hmm. imperfect. Like, really imperfect. Um, it's something that our Orican and Trazin both acknowledge in this book, of course. Their, their whole race is slowly yeah. losing itself. It's slowly going insane. Um, because, like, you know, first of all, there's biotransference itself, which is massively imperfect. Then there's just time. Mm. There's just time. Time is eroding them mm. over millennia. Um, it's not just that. They're probably they're they're a, they're a linear species originally. So that's... extending a linear species mind to mm-hmm. infinite infinite is not going to be a no. good idea. It's, yeah, it's, it's unless so... you have hobbies. <laughs> like yes. if they gone to Warhammer miniatures, it'd be fine. <laughs> well, like Trazin, right? I mean, it's like yeah, it's a, basically what he does. He's a hobbyist. It's what he does. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely what he does. Orican's whole shtick. I mean, I really like that. That the fact that Orican's whole shtick is, we need to escape biotransference. Not go. Not do what Zarek wants and go back to mm. what we were, but to be become more. We need to transcend. I mean, there's some great background in here as well i love the stuff about orican being one of the only voices that spoke up against Mm -hmm. biotransference and was dragged to the biotransference forges in chains and chucked in you know that's awesome that's awesome because he foresaw it right he's he's an oracle Mm -hmm. that's what he does so he foresaw what biotransference would mean it's really cool that stuff i kind of want to see I really want to see some of the other characters from the 40k universe engaging with these guys. I'd love to see, I mean, we've seen Fabius engaging with Trazin, mm-hmm. and that actually works out quite well. Ariman and Orican? Mm-hmm. I think they, they'd well, go together very well, because again, they're very similar. I've told you about my idea for a um, how to do an anthology series, haven't I? I? I don't know if I actually have mentioned it on the show or not. I was going to say, I don't think you um, have, it's no. It's just basically... Um, following a character like Iron Man as he mm-hmm. just goes around and does stuff and just has little conversations with other other characters. So you have a short story of mm-hmm. Iron Man and 
Oregon, or Araman Trazin, or Araman and a High Fleet. Um, but it <laughs> that would be a short conversation. But it, it's more to do with what would make it really interesting. It, it's more to do with how the the two characters talk to each other. It's not a battle. It's not a war. Yeah. But just have a very quiet little anthology of just one character just moving around mm. and just seeing how the different people work off him. Because I think you could probably get the yeah, relationship. Um, you could probably get like a a good ten books out of that of just different characters taking the headline. Well, that's often the most interesting stuff in these books. It's the mm-hmm. character interactions, right? Mm. Um, I, it's what certainly the things I love, like in the Fabius books, for example. It's the it's the internal monologues which are really interesting, but also the way Fabius talks to other mm-hmm. characters. I mean, there's he has engagements with Drakari, of course, with Hemunculi, and that's fascinating. Um, Harlequins at various points, even with Fulgrim mm-hmm. in the final book, he has a, a an actual conversation with Fulgrim at one point, and that's that's brilliant. That's really really cool, right? The politics of the whole universe is just so interesting. Um, And it's often most interesting when it's characters like Fabius or Oricon or or Ahriman, when they're kind of removed from the strictures of, say, the Imperium. Because characters who operate within the purview of the Imperium tend to talk in a very similar way. They have very similar voices. Um, Whereas outside of that, it just gets fascinating. Well, you know, I want to see more books with the Eldari, for example. I want to see way more books with the Eldari. I don't think they've ever been done properly in the fiction yet. The closest we've got, I, I, I think, is in um, oh, the latest uh, John French Araman book, where you've got the opening with mm-hmm. the Harlequins. I've not read that one yet. That is fantastic. Oh, God, there's, the opening sequence with the Harlequin troop in that book is awesome. It really gets what the Harlequins are about. Not just the Eldari, but mm-hmm. the Harlequins themselves. The fact that they are very different, even from other Eldari. So they regard the universe yes. as a stage. And everyone in it as players. Everyone in it. And they manipulate others around them to fulfill the roles that they assign them. That's the whole shtick of the book. There's this this Harlequin troop that's trying to manipulate Araman and his cabal to fulfill a particular mm-hmm. mythic role in their cycles, and it's it's utterly brilliant. It's really good fun. It's uh, it's one that I need to get to. It's on my list. I will get there eventually. It's <laughs> it's very good. I need to review it actually. I mean, I know I haven't yet. I really do need to get and review it actually. Um, I've also been reading the Arcs of Omen <laughs> Abaddon. Uh, this is a great series. This is a great series. It's the, it's the Broken yeah. Realms. It's the Broken Realms for 40k. Not as big. They're quite thin books. But what is here is actually excellent. They're really well written. They're Again, these really great, well written campaign books. This one is almost entirely from the perspective mm-hmm. of Abaddon. Uh, and it explores kind of what he's been doing since uh, Cadia, since Vigilus, what he's up to. The introduction of Vashtor into the universe which is really cool and the the alliance between him and abaddon and the the sort of apocalyptic plan that they're launching on this is the beginning of it and it's great fun very well written there's a sequence in it i really like where there's this planet that vashtor is having difficulty cracking basically he's besieging it but he can't really get a foothold on it and abaddon uh basically says "Ah, don't worry about it don't worry about it. And Vashtor is like, well, what do you mean don't worry about it? We need to get in there. There's something vital to our plans in there. And Angron just says uh, one word. Ab- uh, he says Angron. And Vashtor is like, oh, oh, okay, fine. I need to sit and watch this. He basically uses Angron as a WMD. <laughs> it's really good fun. He points him at planets that need cracking and just launches him at them. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I mean, it's a good book, and I'm really looking forward to the next one, which I've I've got on pre-order, which is, of Mm -hmm. course, Angron, and where it's going to go 
because it does feel like this is building to the end of Ninth Edge. You know, this is going to be like the big ending that defines what the status quo going into Tenth yeah. Edge is going to be. Um, and I hope, you know, I really hope they do something with it, like they did with Broken Realms. You know, I really hope that it is like a, a change to the status quo because it feels like yeah. it should be. Yeah. It really feels like it well, should be. There's a lot going what on. What we've here. seen are the um, the rumours uh, that have been circulating, mm. and obviously taken with a pinch of salt. It looks like it's going to be a yes. hell of a change to uh, to 40k. Really mm. feels like it. it. Feels like they're bringing it more in line with AOS, which is fine. You know, it looks like one of the big imperatives is getting rid of some of the bloody rules bloat. You know, getting rid of some of like the the complexity. Uh, which mm. is good. That can only be a good thing. There's so much. I mean, Ninth Ed, I've really enjoyed, actually. I've really liked Ninth Ed. I think it has been the best version of the game. You know, I really do. I think it's been the best version of the game thus far. But it does have a problem with there's books over yeah. here and there's books over there and there's divergent army lists over there. And even within the books, there's a divergent army list here and here and here and here. And there's all these stratagems on this page and there's all these relics on this page. Um, it feels like what they're going to be doing going into 10th ed is refining mm -hmm. that down a bit. I mean, if they use third ed AOS as a basis, oh, yeah. great absolutely fantastic because that game system is fabulous Agreed. it's absolutely brilliant it's got all the character you could want but also it's easy yeah. to use it's easy to you know it's oh. very very easy to learn it's hard to, to master as all good systems should be yep but getting the mm -hmm. basics down and just being able to play a game is yeah well yeah. i'll say that Having the time so to play a game is another game in itself, but uh... <laughs> yes, of course, of course. I can't, you know, I'm really looking forward yeah. to Tenth Third. I mean, we there's a couple of rumors floating around out there which have been very consistent Terminators versus Tyranids. Like, across the board. Terminators versus Tyranids. I think we can almost put that in the mm. in the tick column. It's that that sounds pretty certain at this point. Um, it, there's a suggestion that the Tyranids are going to get like a massive overhaul like for this. Did, yeah. Like the Necrons did, right? I'm not going to turn well, them back into what oh, they used to be, i.e. visually that. interesting. I sincerely doubt it. Same, but That's they should. Uh, Stop being lame, GW. <laughs> Bring back the cool hive tyrants, the, the warriors, and all that yeah, goody gubs. I want my Tyranids to do be need good bio vores. Yeah. 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 But they do need an overhaul. <laughs> I, I, uh, I tell you what I want. I want a. I want the old school Khan effects, but a plushie of it. <laughs> oh, the, the screamer killer, yeah. Yeah, because then yeah, it's that, got big old huggable, so you can just like idea. strap around a child as a as a like it's How hugging you, but you die. How would you want it? A great idea. Uh well, if it's gonna be like a plush for a kid, you'd want it like, and let, let's say like twelve okay. inches tall. Yeah, That'd be a good a, like hug. Yeah. I am sure size. that. We could put that down as a Patreon um, goal. <laughs> In fact, you know, a lot of the the Tyranids that you guys from Second Ed that you guys really like, they had a huggy yeah. thing going on. If you they remember did. the mm -hmm. the Lictor, yeah. yes, the yeah. Lictor was very huggy too, wasn't it? Are we saying yeah. that for all this time, Tyranids have been completely misjudged, and all they want to do is hug you? All they want is a hug. Um, that sounds oh. like Gene Steeler cult propaganda all to me. Is hug. Well, that's the Beast of Nurgle right there, too. <laughs> yeah, Beasts of Nurgle are very huggy. To be fair, in the, the case of the Beasts of Nurgle, it's sincere. They mm -hmm. actually do yes. just want a hug, but it just doesn't work out yeah. very well. They're just big dogs, unfortunately. They just don't know how big, big they are. Uh, how Le big and how toxic. <laughs> yeah. Big, leprous dogs. <laughs> I do. I, <laughs> I do love the detail in their description that they get they get confused when their new playmates just keel over and stop <laughs> moving. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's utterly brilliant. Uh, I've been checking out a lot of the World Eater yeah. stuff as well. I haven't got the book yet. Got it on pre-order. Um, they look mm. fascinating. I mean, they look brilliant. I can't wait to get the book. I cannot wait to get the book. They look really exciting. I've got to say, I'm really excited to see how they work and, you know, what the background is, uh, what they've done with the background. Watched loads of battle reports with them. And it's kind of clear to me that they've developed them as an entry-level mm -hmm. army. They're very easy to put together. 
they're very easy to put to paint and to you know to conceive an army of very refined army list uh minimal units so you don't have to think too hard about it um and they're act by all accounts they're really easy mm -hmm. to use the, the the codex is apparently much refined yeah. compared to what's so gone before. One of the interesting things um, about that is much like <clears throat> we saw with the Soulblight Lords. Is that the right name? Soulblight, Soulblight Grave Lords. Lords. I knew I was missing a word there, but I couldn't think what the word was. Soulblight <laughs> Stop Lords. Vampire Counts. Um, this is what we're going to start seeing as the format of the codexes into the next edition. Which, yeah. I think from what I've heard of the, the World Eaters uh, Codex, it is very, very good, very, very streamlined. And if yeah. that's the way it's going to be going forward, I'm going to be a very happy man. Because my brain oh, does not have... I mean, the... like... It's also really good because it means I can just leave the Leagues of Voltan until September. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've loved all the mm -hmm. Night Dead codices. I think they've been really, really good. But one of the issues with them is that they do present false choices. Like there are choices that are fun, but you're probably not going to take them because there's better ones, right? Um, so it sounds like what the World Eaters Codex has done is tried to prune away redundancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. False choice is not in the book. So there's only one page of bloody stratagems. <laughs> yes, there are only two divergent army lists in it. Fantastic. And from what I've seen of the rundowns of the Codex, there is nothing redundant in it. So there's a reason to take anything and everything, which is like, oh, yes, <laughs> mm -hmm. wonderful. That is something that has bedeviled 40k since its inception you know the notion that there are units that just don't do anything that are not yeah. as good as others in the same slot so there's no reason why mm. you'd ever take them yeah it sounds like they've gotten rid of that with this book which is like oh yes um and having watched what angron can do mm -hmm. it's like wow wow if he's used correctly he can butcher like half of the opposing army you know he's a beast he's an absolute monster and of course you can get him back yes after he uh, dies that's the thing when i was looking at it from what i understand you can if you can keep your distance and just pepper him from afar you can take him down the downside mm -hmm. to that is he gets back up again yeah. <laughs> it's like well shit yeah <laughs> yep and of course, because of the way the army works, it's really clever, actually. It's really subtle. One of the massive problems the World Eaters have had since, like, Second Ed is that they've been operating in a meta that has favoured yeah. shooting, that's favoured long-range firepower, and has actually very often been really crap for assault-based mm. armies. They've often suffered, really, right up until orcs. Ninth Ed. Ninth Ed <laughs> quite likes assault armies. Yeah, absolutely. Orcs, uh, certain versions of Tyranid armies have really suffered um, but what they've done with this army is that they've they very subtly altered the psychology of it so your, your, your units are getting shot off the table so what you're getting blood mm -hmm. tithe points so the are the units that still exist are getting better and better and better and those blood tithe benefits some of them are borderline broken <laughs> they're borderline abusive yeah, and they stack up that's the thing they last for the mm -hmm. entire game you know so you've ooh, some of them are really 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 nasty so psychologically you're not that as bothered as you would have been before as your units are getting shot off the table in fact some of them you almost set well, them up for the that jackals are there for you know? isn't it like you yeah, yeah. Kind of what they're there yeah, the for, you know, murdered. to yeah. build up the blood yeah, the tithe. murdered, build up the blood tithe, and then Khan the Betrayer can distend his jaw and eat an entire opponent. Just hum, exactly hum. that. Mm. Exactly that. It it's, it sounds like a really interesting synergistic mm -hmm. army, and yeah, I'm I'm kind of into it. I'm kind of into Absolutely. it, you know. Um, I've been looking at like what are hard counters for them. And interestingly, I don't know whether it's because of the way they emphasize extremes by their very nature, but the hard counters for them are the other Chaos Cult Legions. Thousand Sons, 
Thousand Suns, that's going to be a bloody yes. battle. That's going to be a really bloody battle. Because the Thousand Suns have got the firepower and the psychic powers to really do them harm, to really mm -hmm. do them damage. Um, Death Guard. Death Guard are a defensive army, which the World Eaters very much are not. So you get the Hammer and Anvil thing happening. When the World Eaters hit, the Death Guard mm -hmm. don't move. So you just get this incredible, like, battle occurring. It's very, very it interesting. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is all going to pan out. But, um, yeah, we move on. as for myself, I've been painting <laughs> Ogroids uh, for my Chosen of Hashut. And uh, slowly but surely, I actually did a, um, a little play around with the army builder. I actually have a complete mm -hmm. army. Uh, the, the, everything I've got now yeah. I can take oh, on the wow. table. There's uh, 2,000 two points I've accidentally built. Um, it's like, oh, okay then. So, uh, Fantastic. Yeah. Is, is this using yeah. the Slaves to yeah. Darkness book? So, uh, 2,000 points, which is a bit of an annoyance because I really wanted to get another Thermitage, but with wings. Um, <laughs> I also wanted to get another uh, Ogroid Lord and then cut his legs off put the legs on like a Karnak or something like that and just have like a big centaur dude as the army general. Um, and That's I want to get idea. a demon lord, so this is going to be the 3,000 point army. The problem is I've got Bellacore in there and uh, ah, that costly, really yeah. drives the points up, so... Yeah. That, that's okay. Um, outside of that, I haven't really done much else because I got Sonic Frontiers and I've been playing that. And oh. it's very, 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 very good. Oh, you've enjoyed Look Sonic at, Frontiers, Look, yeah? It, it plays oh, like how you think Sonic Adventure played. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. But it, it, it plays not. how your memory <laughs> tells you Sonic Adventure played. And. In all honesty, <laughs> there have been sequences in that game where I haven't stopped moving. Like, just playing with Sonic, you haven't stopped moving for nine, ten minutes. Like, the entire time, you are constantly keeping your momentum. Because the game... yeah, Which is some effect from Absolutely, you game, have right? to keep your momentum up. And it's all... Oh, all oh, the, the momentum effects are good. They are... Mm, 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 mm. I think the cyberspace levels are a bit... Uh, the Yeah... There are, yeah, they're, they're there and that's fine. But the rest of the game, brilliant. And the supersonic bits are fucking astonishing. Like, so like as three D Sonic games go, easily the best. Yeah, the best. E easily the, bar, the best. Yeah. The, the bar's not high. Not. The uh, yeah, that to be one hundred percent fair. The bar is low. Well, on you know that one, how but... in Sonic games, when you get the supersonic at the end of the game, it's just like, ah, oh, here we go, and now we've got mm -hmm. a big, basically, um, quick time event battle. And it's been that way for a long, long time now. A long Whilst time. This is still that kind of. There, it's interspersed with action sequences, a amazing soundtrack, and a real sense of power. And that this is what really oh. blew me away about it. So, for example, the thing I fought, it fired a big breath laser. So you could duck out the way, or you could drive straight into the laser. And just start battering out the way, basically pushing the laser back, and then just frying the creature with its own laser. And it's like, holy shit! I have never felt this good as Supersonic before. All he needs the swirly eyes. You know, it's like, gotta fucking kill Amy Rose. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. So you want to play the evil version, of the the STC version? A little, yeah, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. And the other thing that I've been doing. Over here, it's quite large. Is I've started building for Joseph a Psych the Hedgehog playset. Ah, oh, so out of just bits and bobs that we found around the house. He told me what shapes he wanted. Oh, brilliant! It's, that's all it is. So that has taken a <laughs> lot of time so far. Yeah. What are you making it out of? Cardboard boxes, um, yogurt tins, uh, <laughs> what cocktail around, yeah. sticks. You know. It's just all mm -hmm. these bits and bobs. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. That's absolutely so brilliant. Of course, today he just went, need a high chair. <laughs> Why does it need a high chair? For Egg the Chow. You're absolutely correct. It needs need a high chair obviously. for Egg the Chow. Of course it does. Obviously. Mm. 
<laughs> right, so speaking of things that bamboozle and confuse me, shall we get into some various bits of story? Yeah. yeah. Let's get the big one out of the way. There's a pricing update coming. No. Oh, yes. Yeah, of course. 6%. Bah. Uh what Oof. is changing? The prices of plastic miniatures, Forge World and Citadel resin miniatures, standard and artificer Citadel brushes, spray paints. Now the stuff that no one else is reporting on. What's not changing? Starter sets, oh. paint sets, paint pots, <laughs> Citadel tools, codexes, rule books, battle tomes, synthetic C STC brushes. Okay, right. dokes. Yeah, Fair we're in the enough. middle of. But, but the major, but the majority of the uh, the stuff that people yeah. are buying is but changing. But it's also not yeah. going up by twelve uh, percent. It's only going up by six. So it's still underneath inflation. Well, no, because they're a, they're ahead of the <laughs> curve. GW has been ahead of the curve and in increasing the prices for years. So when <laughs> it only goes up by six percent, it's because it's been up six percent previously and way <laughs> higher than that before. <laughs> so when they're like, "Oh, it's not that big of an increase," it's like, "Yeah, because you've increased your prices so much." Previously, <laughs> that it just doesn't seem bad now. <laughs> it doesn't it, seem like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a psychological. Right? That, that's not crazy no, no, for no, me no, to no, say, I right? See where you're coming from. Um, the, no, it's fair. There it's was an interesting really conversation that happened on the Discord earlier on this week before this price increase came out, actually. And it was the breakdown of how much it costs to, to Warhammer, basically. And mm -hmm. what we all kind of came to the conclusion of was. Whilst we would prefer it was cheaper, it isn't actually that overpriced for what you get. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it's an expensive, uh, but it's a hobby. It is a hobby. So it's yeah. one of those things, you know. Um, you compare it to something like Airsoft or, I don't know, what, what do other people do as hobbies? I can't remember. Um <laughs> shouldn't you, you shouldn't compare it to like, the, the competition, like Soulgrave and... Stuff like that. Say again, sorry. Can you compare it to um, compare to oh, things Frostgrave. like Soulgrave or whatever it's called? The other yeah. Frostgrave and other yeah, miniature well, I mean, things. Well, what the price is like in comparison to to those ones? Is it similar? I mean, is it better? Frostgrave is it worse? a bit cheaper. I, I you know more about Frostgrave Frost is a bit cheaper, but it's also built to be a bit cheaper. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you're buying a box set, um, it is kind of like your buying an old-fashioned multi-part kit from GW. So right. you know, the, the miniatures are smaller, they are, um, there's less variation, less quality, but that's yeah. not to say that the stuff you get in Frostgrave isn't great, because it, it fucking is. I love Frostgrave. Uh, mm, but yeah. you compare it to something that came out um, for Age of Sigma, one of the new box sets that came out for Age of Sigma, yeah. it's not really comparable. It's one of those one of those things. Yeah. There's a reason that GW is known to be the the top dog. Um, but you put it up against War Machine or Hordes, and it's it's pretty much the same price. Oh, what mm -hmm. about Star Wars? Because Star Wars is a big contender at the moment, isn't it? The Battlegrounds? Yeah, front thingy? hat, battle trousers. I don't, yeah. I don't know what it's called. Oh, Marvel, Marvel too. Critical. Oh, where's Big Swing and D? Big Swing and D could compare things yeah. in the chat, couldn't he? Because he doesn't Big Swing and D do... Um, uh, Marvel? Uh, or is that just Christoph? I, I can't Christopher remember. Does. I don't know if Big Swing and D does. Big yeah. Swinging D, please tell us in the chat. I know that Big Swinging D likes to play some Big Swinging Battletech. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Battletech too. No, yeah. just the first one. I would imagine Battletech's cheaper because I don't think you need to buy quite as no, many miniatures. No. <laughs> uh, Adam White in the chat says, they predicted inflation better than any government. <laughs> <laughs> It's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Wouldn't it be ironic to get like a Games Workshop based <laughs> government eventually? <laughs> they probably do it better than anyone that's been in, to be yeah. perfectly honest. I mean, yeah, you yeah. know, I would be willing to try that <laughs> at the moment. What if it was Brian Ansell? What if Brian Ansell decided to become president and he decided to grow back the Brian yeah. Ansell 80s hair? No, 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 no. Emperor. Emperor, em Emperor Ansell. <laughs> Yeah. What's the emperor, right? <laughs> <laughs> Although I would vote for Andy Chambers. War master, <laughs> maybe? No, that doesn't have the right ring. You don't want the leader of your country being called a war master, oh, do you? No. <laughs> this is, <laughs> there's jokes I could make here, which I'm going to just leave well alone. Uh, yeah, um, same. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, all right, so it, it this is happening. Um, it is shit in a time when everything's getting more expensive, but there's a reason why prices of stuff go yeah. up. It's because everything gets more expensive. And it's just shite at the moment, really, isn't it? So let's, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's instead jump into some vampires. Because oh, yeah. there is a couple of community posts this week which have all been about vampires and vampiritic things oh. and one of the cool ones i saw which i thought would be quite fun to talk about is that they did a little list of vampires in the mortal realms and i quite like it oh they were naughty weren't they they were very naughty with this mm-hmm. yes yeah, I, I, yes, this was. The, I, mm, I wonder. I wonder what they're sort of suggesting if, here. If, I'm going to wish you a spoiler alert at the end of this talk, <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah it's probably wise. It, it's been enough time, and I'm going to just drop it. Um, so yeah, they talk about uh, the Hollow King, um, which is a really quite quite a really good book. I really enjoyed that one. Um, it's a really mm-hmm. nice miniature. I, uh, I quite like that at all. The Mother of Nightmares, which also really good book, and that miniature is fucking gorgeous. It is just astonishingly good. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it just brings up some other other little vampires. Yeah, Neferata. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Ulrika from the uh, the Gotrek mm-hmm. books. Ulrika Johnson yes, from Gladiators. Yes, uh, <laughs> she was turned into a vampire by uh, Wolf. Oh, damn. Has, has this vampire been through as many men as Ulrika Johnson on Gladiators? <laughs> been through more men than dysentery. Uh. <laughs> damn! That's a lot. Good for her. <laughs> I'd make her a Lamy yes, vampire then, presumably. I, I just realised that uh, I really yeah, yeah. should have made a cursed city joke when I said that she was turned by wolf. Screwed myself over <clears> there. Um, so, yeah. Who's the last uh, one? I don't Genevieve. recognize her. Oh, Genevieve. oh that's Genevieve. She's back. Well, apparently, well, they... Mm, right. Mm, they're being very coy. Mm. They're being very you, coy about it. Because that's not why I imagine Genevieve looked like. I would imagine Genevieve would look more like the one oh, yeah, yeah. in the Sorry, middle yeah, than the Genevieve's one on the end. The middle. Yeah, oh, Genevieve's the one in the middle. Yeah, that Sorry. makes more sense. Uh, they, oh, yeah, they, they've, done okay, the, okay. they've written the list out to a different order to the picture. Because why I'm... would you make it easy for me? Eh? Why? <laughs> why? So, yeah. Um, Ulrika, obviously. Who knows? Uh, anything's possible. Genevieve. I'm just mm-hmm. going to freaking throw this out there now. Uh, you've all had a year and a half, if not two years now, to, to get this book. Gothgull Hollow mm-hmm. is a direct sequel to Dragonfells. Yeah. And I don't mean that as in... Little bit, little bit. I'm talking. There is a direct fucking line from Drakenfels to Silver uh-huh. Nails to Genevieve Undead to Gothgull Hollow. It is a mm-hmm. continuation of that freaking series, and it is astonishing. And the payoff that you get of having Genevieve turn up in the mortal realms is amazing. All right. It's interesting. It does it. I wonder if, for like the Soul Blight Grave Lords in Third Ed, if we're going to get a mini of her, if she's actually going to be like I a would character. Be so happy, so so happy. They're certainly pushing mm. her, aren't they? I mean, normally if there's not going to be a miniature or a you know a, a version of her in the game, they wouldn't really be doing this. No, no, um, you know that's the thing. If I mean, Warhammer Community this year is doing a lot of looking back on its own history so possibly that's mm-hmm. what they're doing here quite possibly but the fact that she's in the freaking she's like actually back in the mortal realms she's actually around yeah, yeah she's actually active in the mortal realms that's and really that. interesting it kind of lifts the lid on a lot of other things as well doesn't it i mean what they've done is given like nagash now kind of has license to bring back yes. almost anyone and what's really fun is that she is running. She's come back. She spends most of the um, uh, the book as a ghost, and that's that's the interesting part. Mm-hmm. She uh, has to like reform herself through sheer will and blood it's to uh, to reappear. It's uh, 
It's kind of similar to what Nagash did yes, with Zigfold, so. isn't it? How mm. they brought him back. Um, you know? And she is basically running forward going, it's coming. The biggest evil you've ever seen is coming. Uh, that's the entire point of Gothical Hollow, that evil is gathering because something massive is coming. Mm. I wonder what that's going to be. Yeah, you think it, you think it's going to be Drakenfell? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I shoot. <laughs> whether it's Drakenfell oh. by name, I don't know. But that's that's what it is, uh, isn't it? That why why else would you bring Genevieve back in? Yeah, I mean, like Genevieve is so tied mm. to that story. Well, I mean, line, right? it means that they've come to some kind yeah. of agreement with Kim Newman because Kim mm. Newman took Genevieve oh, wow. with him, didn't he? When uh, he went off to write, I know Dracula. That's right. That's right. So, oh God, could you get possibly get him back writing Warhammer I, fiction? I want Bloody that hell. so badly. Wow, that would be very the, interesting. That would be very. I might ask him. The, <laughs> just the Kim Newman who now writes things like the Bloody Red Baron and what was that one about Dracula in the sixties? Um, oh yeah, um, I can't think what it's called. But yeah, th- no, Saturday that, Night that, Funk. That's a, a very Blood at the disco. There's a much more power for Kim Newman that's writing this stuff than uh, yeah, when he was writing Drakenfels. Whilst Drakenfels is one of my favorite books of all time, yeah. he's evolved into an incredible author. So it's like, please, mm-hmm. God, bring him back. Just just give me one more Kim Newman story. Just just one more. Just, just come one more, man. Just one more. I, you know, considering a lot of the, the the really sort of original OG writers for Games Workshop have mm-hmm. come back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's not outside the realms of possibility no, at no. all. It's just a shame that Bill King's retired because I would love to see what Bill King did with the Mortal Realms. Yeah, you know, wow. Go absolutely hell for leather. But yeah, it's just... It's not like you can do another Gotrick book either. Oh yeah, since he's yeah back. absolutely. Mm-hmm. I kind of I kinda would like to see King just take a, a run at something else, because got because Godric's moved no. from like so many hands now that as much as it would be nice to have him back with Bill King, I would like to see what Bill King just did. Just here, run riot. Oh, Skaven book! I think actually, we talked yeah, about this actually, ages ago, didn't we? Yeah, Give him back a Skaven book, so the Skaven yep, can do perfect, something. Perfect. Just <laughs> yeah, Bill King writes Thankwall. That that makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the story of what Thankwall did in his dungeon for umpteen millennia when he was sitting outside <laughs> of reality. <laughs> it's just the best thing in the world. He's got plucked up at the end times by the horned rat and thrown in a uh, a dungeon made of stars. <laughs> in like a dungeon yeah. dimension, yeah. Brilliance. Utter well, brilliance. Moving on, another little fun thing that Warhammer community has been doing. They've been doing the 40 years of Warhammer. Which has been lovely. Yeah, that's been really mm. fascinating. I mean, obviously, the one that I've, uh, I've sent now is number five, the Chaos Renegade, just because it's a really fun thing to look yeah. at. But Grom the Paunch. Oh, oh my I God. I love seeing Grom the Paunch again. Yes, that was wonderful. My God, I remember seeing him like, when I first got into the well, hobby. Well, you would have done. He would have been on a cardboard uh, cutout that got stuck to a base. Yeah. <laughs> God. Do you remember that, folks? Grom the Paunch and a Orc catapult. <laughs> and he uh, was on the other side. It was an elf riding a griffin and. Was it a bolt thrower? Oh my god, yeah, the, the cardboard yeah. things that you got with like the, the box sets. Bloody hell. Oh, man. So. But wow, I'm just like, taking a look at that Chaos Renegade now. I really. I, you know what I really love? They've kind of gone back. And they've taken a lot of design cues from those original miniatures for the latest mm-hmm. range of Chaos Space Marines. And I'm really pleased about that because there was a period when they became very anodyne. Yeah. They just became kind of like Marines with the the, the big backpacks and yeah, trimming. Yeah. Well, they, they were spiky that was Marines. It. It's kind yeah. of like, okay, yeah. yeah. And it's sort of like, okay, you know, there's space for that. There's definitely space for that in the Chaos Space Marines. But yeah, you know, from my personal aesthetic, I love these old ones that have the mutations and the the warp twisted armor and the flesh and the bio mechanisms and whatnot. And they've really gone back to that with the latest range, and I'm very very happy it's, about it. You know it. how they keep like doing miniatures based on Mark Gibbons' work. 
I'm hoping that at some yes. point they're going to go back and start doing stuff based on uh, Tony Ackland's work. Now, Tony Ackland, you, mm. for anybody who doesn't know, he was one of the guys who worked alongside Miller and Blanche for the Realms of Chaos books. And if you yes. think of Chaos Marines oh, of this God. time, chances are you're thinking of an Ackland picture. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, can you imagine modern day miniatures based with that aesthetic? It's like, num, num, num. yes, and now mm. they can do it. That's the thing. Now they have the technology to do it, you know? So, mm. oh, my goodness, that would really be wonderful. Would. And, you know, Warhammer Games Workshop at the moment really seems to be looking back on itself to see what it can, what it can do, yeah. where it can get things out. And, uh, I mean, if like the Warhammer Plus miniature next year was like one of these guys, I would be over the moon. So good. I'd be, yes, I'd be well up for that. Well up for that. Yeah. Andy, any thoughts on the uh, the Chaos Renegade? No, I like him. It's a nice blast from the past. <laughs> there is a, when you go down a little bit, there's just a guy that looks like Bane entered 40k and forgot his trousers. It's a... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Obliterator, you mean? Yeah. Is that him? Yeah. That's, uh... Oh, the big obliterator mm. guy. Yes, I like him. <laughs> That's a lovely kit as well. I'm telling you, there's so much stuff on that sprue. It's unbelievable to, to customize mm. those guys. And they're they're brilliant in the game yes. now. Obliterators. They are, oh, you are... You want them in your Chaos Space Marine army. You yeah, want they, them. They are definitely needed. Okay, then. Moving on. Another little fun one here. Is yep. this the one about how, how to, to say different, different things? And Did anybody give this a try? Well, I mean, it's it's odd, isn't it? I mean, some of them, like, I mean, Robote, mm. Robote Gilliman, yeah, that's yep. correct, yep. isn't that's it? That's right. Is that how you say it? I mean, the big, the, the ones that I really like are the ones that are deliberately sort of Cthulian <laughs> and Lovecraftian in nature. It's like Zeech, right? Like Zeech, yeah? It's deliberately designed so that it's ambiguous, yep. right? Or so that it's unpronounceable. That's the whole point. It's like Cthulhu, yeah. right? I mean, in, in um, Lovecraft's letters, the way he said you pronounce it is, it's like a cough. It's like Cthulhu. That's why mm-hmm. he wrote it like that. It's supposed to be unpronounceable by the oh, human tongue, Oh, the internet tongue, right? just ran with that, like, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really did. Zinch. Yeah. I, I love it. I love uh, the, the Chaos Gods' names are great. I suppose the simplest ones are Nurgle and Corn because they're kind of you know mm-hmm. slanish. Yeah, the uh, it, it all comes because of uh, Arbites, which I never thought I never That's thought right. they would ever be called Arbites. That no, I thought it. I thought it would be Arbites. Arbites. Ah, right? Arbites. Yeah. Arbites. Yeah. Arbites. That's very odd, isn't it? I thought I thought it was Adeptus Arbites myself. Did they say Lieutenant or Lieutenant? <laughs> yeah, it could be either. That could be it's pronounced a, either it's a way. Lieutenant. Yeah. I did have British, are you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, I did have an English teacher who was absolutely. If you said Lieutenant, he was went absolutely berserk. It's <laughs> Lieutenant, but no, you yes, can say it either way. Okie dokies. Oh, I mean, and as for like fantasy words, the words that are just made up, you can pronounce them however the hell you like. It doesn't matter. It's why I shall always pronounce Nagash as Big Daddy Hat. <laughs> Cicatrix Maledictum. That one's reasonably easy, even though it's long. That's reasonably easy. I, I am easy. amazed there isn't a yeah. band out there called Cicatrix Maledictum. It's like, it's. Yeah, it, Cicatrix it's Maledictum. Name for it's, a, it's, it's made yeah, for a like metal proper band. death metal. It's made for a death metal yeah. band, isn't it? I was wanted. I mean, they didn't do they didn't do Garthkull, Garthkull mm. Thracker. You see, once again, because that's surely that that's one of the hardest ones to pronounce. I always do it as Garthkull with a hard z. Garthkull. Garthkull, yeah. yeah. I used to as a kid, but apparently it is it is supposed to be Garthkull. Mm. Um, but I like Garthkull well, better getting... myself. He gets more bite orky. into the Z, going it does like sound like cool. Yeah. Yeah. Garth cool. Yeah. But it's supposed to be Garth cool, apparently. Uh, Garth doesn't sound... Garth... Garth <laughs> doesn't sound like an orc word, though, that they'd say. Gaz... No, you're right. Gaz, 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 Gaz. Yeah. If it was Gavgul, I could yeah. see that. 
for Gaz. Gaz there's, a, I mean, there's a subtle mm. one for Abaddon as well. I mean, it is Abaddon. Mm. That's how it's pronounced, it's, even though it's derived yeah. from Abaddon. It's Abaddon because, you know. And it's, Abaddon it's, sounds better. Abaddon <laughs> it just sounds sound, like a better name. Yeah. It does, it does. Because, of course, yeah. it's also a joke, like a lot of names. Sure. Okay. It's a bad one, a bad one. A bad one. Yeah. Oh, he's a bad one, you know? <laughs> Bearing in mind, there was also a character in the background once called Abadass, <laughs> a badass. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oh, honestly, you go back to anything <laughs> before 1992, and there are jokes aplenty. Oh, Mm-hmm. Almost all of them were jokes. I mean, Garthkill's name is a joke. Yeah. It's Margaret it's Thatcher. Like Margaret Thatcher. Um, it's a mispronounced, for, you know, Margaret Thatcher. That character was actually designed as a go yeah. at Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. And of course, uh, you've got uh, Mikkel Jackson, who was a zombie with a flaming head, it's just based on the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Michael Jackson. That's brilliant. Oh, it's naughty, though, yeah. actually, that one, isn't it? Considering, like, that, that's actually a little bit naughty, oh, but it is very, funny. very funny. Um, I can't help but laugh, but, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. a bit near the knuckle, <laughs> that one, but, uh, yeah, that's that's one of my favourites. Yeah. Archeon is kind of tricky, I suppose. If you, you know, if you mm. read it, because you wouldn't know, given the C-H, you could pronounce it as mm-hmm. Archeon. Yeah? It's uh, it's it's an unusual one, but uh, that hard k sound, you'd think it'd be a K, maybe. Archeon. Yeah. Archeon. That's, it's one of the weird ones, isn't it, where it, the moment you start singing it to yourself a couple of times, you start just thinking, what the fuck am I actually trying to say? It's like <laughs> Is he called Archeon because he's an archangel? An Archeon Is that the idea behind is, his name? It's from uh, mythology. It's like a... Um, uh, oh. I'm trying to think of a way of describing it. It's like a personification of a belief, but it, not like a god, like a mm. um, like a tempered belief. So I want, oh, right. I want, interesting, a storm of vengeance to go over there and kick the shit out of my neighbour. It would be an archeon mm. that would form to go and do it, so to speak. It would be, it'd, oh, right. it'd be okay. much, much bigger oh, stuff. It wouldn't just yeah. be going to kick your neighbor's ass. It would be like, yeah. you destroy the... Uh, yeah. I want a bowl of ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. I want a bowl of ice cream the size of New Orleans. Yeah, That's a big bowl. <laughs> That's a lot of ice cream. That's a lot of nuts. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew Broderick. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know that like Abaddon is from mythology. <laughs> I hope, uh, just to uh, put the brakes on for a second, I hope you're all proud of me for growing as a person and for not mentioning anything about Matthew Broderick when he was mentioned. Huh. Moving on. I was, I, I was seeing the few words. <laughs> Kill the person, you know. Uh, Matthew okay. Broderick, murderer. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm not lying, it's true. Uh, Kill the person in Ireland. Um, right, moving on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I suppose this, this is quite a tricky one, is it? Mortarion or Mortarion? Yeah, it's Mortarion, isn't it? Mortarion. Yeah. Should we move on? Uh, because we've got a couple of things to get through before we get to uh, the yes, of course. <laughs> being able to be allowed to sleep. Um, also. Oh God, yeah. I mean, this this is this caused a stir, didn't it? People were really pleased so, about this. The old world continues. Tomb Kings. Yeah. The Tomb Kings are making a reappearance, and as I always wow. do, I study these maps when they come out. Mm-hmm. Of course, yes. this shit is ingrained in my brain, like how I learned the alphabet. It is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, interesting things about this map. Once again, there's been a bit of a shift and things have been moved around. Nowhere near as much yep. as the last one. Nowhere near. But mm-hmm. um, there are some towns that have been, sort of, uh, some towns, some cities that have been just moved about a little bit, made a bit more generalised, and yep. there's a bit more of a um, an empire feel to where they all sit. Uh, I quite like mm-hmm. the fact that there's all the roads, and at one point you can see the little black pyramids as they're dotted around. That yeah, makes me very, yeah. very happy. Also, uh, does anyone else see uh, the obelisks? I wonder who built them. Oh, oh interesting. Mm. Uh, interesting. So, yeah, so that, 
I mean, I it's I, I can't wait to see what they do with the Tomb Kings with like current day sculpting technology. Yeah, I. It's one of those things where I still don't understand what this is going to be. No, I, I have no idea. I'm kind of in the dark here. When are they actually going to announce it? Like, uh, like a, a re proper reveal? My guess is going to be... Reckon? Don't know. My guess, guess, guess would be it'll either be Christmas this year or next summer. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Because we've got the rumours, assuming they're correct, say that 10th yeah, July, is this yeah. summer, isn't it? 10th at 40k. So that's going to absolutely... They're not going to do another big release no. around that time. That's going to absolutely dominate that. And for a long yeah. time, right? For at least a few months. Like, into the winter, but I would saying say. saying that, is this going to be a specialist games release where it's going to be? Because my guess would be, because they pulled a lot of the City of Sigma stuff and they're currently mm -hmm. redoing Cities of Sigma from the ground up, my guess would be that everything Empire from that is going to come out in this. Yeah, they're going to do like a dual. It's going to work no, in both I game systems. No, I think it'll systems, just be yeah. Old World. No? Because Cities of Sigma will oh, have its own right, it's just look gonna be by that it. point. So yeah, it'll be... Right. That, I mean, mm. obviously there'll be new Forge World releases, there'll be upgrade kits that you can get, all that type of thing. Um... <laughs> But my guess would be that the bones of it, <laughs> the bones, um, that, that was uh -huh. the bones of it will be that last what? run of Empire stuff as the the base. <laughs> yeah. Whether they then re-release, I mean, they won't re-release the Tomb Kings as they were because those things are ancient. I know they're ancient. <laughs> you know, barring Maybe they would ironically. <laughs> You know, oh, they've come back from the ancient um, uh, uh, plastic kit press kits of oh, old. Imagine if they just re-released that skeleton horde from 1988. Oh my god! You know, oh. people would buy it probably because it does have a certain nostalgic mm. quality mm. about it. But even so, Tomb Kings are all in resin, and I mean the resin of the yeah. the bad days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and also, god. I mean the, <laughs> the original army had problems with being all sort of like one note. If you collected Tomb Kings, you you soon got bored of mm. painting bone. I can tell you. Well, that's why they've got the um the the snake guy, uh, not bone colored at all. Yeah. He's black mm, and he's got exactly. red and gold on him just to make him pop a bit more. It's quite lovely as well, actually. It's a lovely. Maybe design. they'll go more into the the obsidian designs because some of the big creatures yeah. were obsidian, and I think uh, the scorpions right. were meant to be yeah, kind of yeah, black were, coloured yeah. as well, weren't they? Oh yeah, that's right. Maybe so, like you know, the animated statues and things like that. That'd be cool. Yeah, the Shapti, mm -hmm. I think they were called. That'd be fabulous. Yeah, yeah. The Shapti, they had bone giants. Yeah, the big um, sphinx thing. Yeah, whatever that was called. Yeah, that yeah, was the fun. big uh, giant Kalima statue. I, I don't know what it was called. Oh but yes, the, the yeah. big eye lasers. <laughs> I forgot about that. They were neat. There was an undead giant mm. as well for them, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. Creature. He was an he archer, was, yeah. if I remember right. correctly. Yeah, he's cool. He's he's, he's very good in tall <laughs> war warhammer. He's fun. <laughs> but yeah. So there's a lot to work with, um, and of course they can now. I mean, assuming that it is going to be like a full army or something they can introduce new stuff of course, they yeah. can bring mm. in new yeah. bits and pieces so yeah setra they could bring setra well, i think back that's in kind this. of i did see something about uh do, 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 do. so the tyrannical rule of setra the imperishable the undying king of kemri the supreme monarch of nakara and the other so, two kings are going to be major players in the stories we tell in warhammer the old world because that's the time that brilliant because if you remember, this, Excellent. this isn't so, anywhere near the end times. This is way back to what was history when Warhammer was first came out, you know, it was first uh, released. Yeah, yeah. This is going back to a point that was history then. So, Oh, of course, Nagash is also yeah. still asleep, isn't yeah. he, at this point? He's in one of his hibernation periods, so Setra is kind of the Lord That's of the right, Undead yeah, at yeah. this point. So... Yeah, it is. It's it's one of those things where I've got a feeling I'm going to end up just getting book upon book upon book because I think this is going to be the mm. the quintessential old world collection for want of a better term. Um, <laughs> but I just don't understand how the miniatures are going to work. 
I, it's, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm interested to see what it is. I'm not that, for me, I'm not that bothered because I'm more interested in yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. on now. You know, you know, I'm more in, I'm also just more interested in the mortal realms than the old world. But I am fascinated to yeah, see what same. they do with these old armies, you know, these old forces and the old background. Are they going to, sh- obviously, they're going to shake it up a little bit. Obviously, it's not going to be exactly the same. We've already seen that with the maps, right? The topography of the old world has yeah, changed. It really has. They've gone back and they've reworked quite a lot. Uh, and it, 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 mm. it, it just fascinates me because. <laughs> Because I, I just can't get my head around what it is, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I at the moment, no. I have no idea. I've like no my, my idea original, what it is. is it, my is original it, thought was going to be this was the replacement of the Horus Heresy. And yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is mm. it the Horus Heresy of yeah. the fantasy system? So that would be in Horus Heresy, you've got Chaos Marines, Loyalist Marines, and you've got mm-hmm. Ad Mech and Dark Mech. You've got Ad Mech, Dark Mech, and a few yeah. like hangers on, you know, the but, other, you know, a few bits and pieces. Go, that's that's, that's it, isn't it? There's only the four the much. four lines, for one, want a better term. Yeah. So And interestingly enough, at this point for Horus Heresy, the this the difference between Loyalist and Heretic models are not that different. No. They're pretty similar. No, with a few yeah, exceptions. Yeah. Very, very few exceptions. Yeah. <laughs> This is you no. can't really do that here. They yeah, have to no. all be unique. Everything has to be unique, and that's yeah. really fascinating. It's as I imagine that's why they've gone for such a limited number of forces. Yeah. Um, because, like you know, there's there's nothing else here, is there? There's no like chaos or anything Doesn't like that at the you... moment. In uh, in Camry now. Oh, oh you just mean in the old the old world oh, in, in general? In the old but world in they general. Have nothing, you know, they have they, they have the Grund is on the map and they've made an effort to move Zana Grund around. So does that mean there's gonna be chaos mm-hmm. for us? I mean what? Just mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, I just don't know at all. I'm I'm constantly baffled and bemused and fascinated every time something comes out. Uh, yeah, the fact they've bothered to put Zar Nagrund on there kind of suggests that there are yeah. going to be Chaos Dwarfs. I mean, why would you bother yeah, otherwise? I, or at least, why would you bother moving it? Why would you bother making the effort in, yeah, you know, round, like rounding it up and changing things around? And it, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just genuinely fascinated, and I kind of wish that they'd mm. tell us what it is, how the miniatures go. I think that's it. <laughs> Once I know how the miniatures will work, everything else will fall into place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because yeah. we don't know if, if they're doing a skirmish game or if they're uh, going back to well, the, the old the trays, was, do we? Oh, the old regiments. No. Oh my god, the yeah. old regiments. Well, the rumor Jesus. was that yeah. it was going to be based on a modified is it 6th edition fantasy? Oh, Oh, in that yeah. case, it would be regiments then, wouldn't it? Because it only yeah, yeah, works yeah. with regiments. Yeah. It's got uh, to be. Something like, it was, I can't remember if it was 6th or, or 5th, but I remember seeing a couple of rumours running around that they're all coalescing against each other, that um, it was a modified version of an old rule set that was a lot more together, a lot more simpler, simplified. Yeah. It's going to need It's well, going to need to be, because like 6th then was actually quite it was. complicated. Which is why I'm second guessing myself because it's like, would it be six dead? I don't know. Because I mean, mm. there still hadn't. Uh, that's one of the things about one fancy battle is that it it was built on the back of um, fact of historical gaming of like Napoleonic and that's, uh, that's exactly Dark Ages it. gaming and uh, stuff like that. And it came with all yeah. the problems of historical yeah. wargaming as well. I mean, one of the, the big issues in Fantasy Battle was the fact that it almost universally had to be regiments. Um, and that made for some pretty dull games. It sometimes did, yeah. yeah absolutely. I mean, there, there's a reason to stop playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's a reason, like everyone stopped playing it, and I mean, like literally everyone. Towards, the, I mean, towards. Of course, I think it was it ninth. They're the love, mm. the very last one. No. Nobody played it. Right. Nobody played it. Also, yeah, I mean, we, like, we've yeah. talked about that on the show before, and that was yeah. also due to like GW well, it the, not. It was the, the cycle of diminishing Absolutely. returns. Let it die. Yeah. Less people were interested, which meant yeah. they 
put less effort into it, which meant less people played it, which means they put mm. less effort into it. Ah, uh, do you really believe that? Because, I mean, look at AOS. People love AOS and they don't put anything <laughs> behind AOS. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. But very different so, market no. 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah, that's also true. I mean, um, there's also the issue you have that certain armies, it just didn't make sense for them to be in regiments. Things like, for example, orcs mm -hmm. in regiments? It's a bit silly. Um, beastmen in regiments? Mm -hmm. Why? Blood letters. Demons in regiments. Can you imagine pink horrors lining up in regiment? <laughs> It's so well, the, the way silly. I always go around that is yeah, and I know I, putting a black orc at the front of every orc regiment. Because that's what they were there to do. <laughs> that's what black orcs did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I, I always find it funny when like forest goblins who are all just sitting there high off their asses <sighs> on mushrooms. It's like, now, four by three, four by three. Uh, everyone form <laughs> up <laughs> with your identical <laughs> spears and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it's um it's not my style no. of gaming that's for damn sure and if it is that i probably will not be right. bothering. it's the thing though i think i could be talked into it depending on what there is and because i've been mm -hmm. for a bit of a laugh building a chaos dwarf army uh in regiments <laughs> more for the Mm -hmm. for something to look at than, than anything else. It's just more of like a display army than a, an actual play army. But if there's ways of yeah. playing Chaos Dwarfs in this, then I'm already ahead of the curve. So. Of course. Of course. I mean... I mean, there are certain characters they could they could carry over as well from AOS very easily. I mean, the likes of Balakor, mm -hmm. he's around. He's around at this point. I mean, he's one of the most ancient creatures in the... Um, the fantasy battle setting, so they could easily port yeah. him over. All the demons. Oh my god, I obviously. just realised you could have Astrogoth before he got into the big metal suit. <laughs> into his, mm -hmm. his stroller oh, wow. thing, yes. You could actually have young Astrogoth oh, before man, he turned to stone. He has to be called young Astrogoth. That'd be the cool. Young Astrogoth That'd be cool. <laughs> actually, now that I think about it, Archaeon is around as well. Yes. Is he a Sigmarite at this point? Well, not a Sigmarite, is he? A... Yeah. Oh, no, it he... would be a Sigmarite. Yeah, he, he may be at this point a Templar of yeah. Sigmar, so that, that, that wouldn't would that be interesting. Fun, actually. God, wouldn't that be There's... cool if they yeah, introduced if he... him as a, a, an Empire oh. character? Uh, uh, yeah, a hero who you could have leading armies against oh, Chaos. Yeah. That'd be funny. I've <laughs> just realised, awesome. much to my horror, that one of my favourite things in the Warcraft mythology was nicked completely from Warhammer. And that is the Archeon Arthas oh, yeah. <laughs> mirror. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. I've only just hit that. That's only just hit me right now. <laughs> Fucking I mean, I don't think Archeon went back home and knifed he, his he dad, but... No. Was, I, mean, I don't actually, think he did. Arche I think he Arche went to the Archeon. Chaos Lands and just went, nah, Where fuck it, I like it here. I'm going to get all these like, bits. Archeon murdered his entire family. Did he? Did he do yeah. that pre? Did he do that before heading off to the waste? Before though? heading off to the yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Arthur's goes evil, then comes back home, then kills his dad. Oh, and his Archeon heart. does it the other way around. He goes mad, kills his whole family, burns down his entire order, and then heads off into the chaos. But does he have <laughs> the amazing line of succeeding you, father? No, I don't think so. I think he oh, was mad at like, that point, so he probably was just like father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, sure. I don't think like, a lot. A lot of the chaos characters are wandering around at this time. They could easily like go back and bring in, you know, the old sort of like the characters that aren't mm -hmm. around anymore. Like they could ooh. so use this as an excuse to bring them back. Bring back Festus. He's fun and he's fat. Festus. Festus is still around. Is he? Yeah. No, no. I mean, is it Festus the one who likes? Uh, he's got the the little um, um, dude on his uh, back who makes yeah, potions. Yeah, yeah. Festus is still around. You can is still use him in Maggot Kid. Yeah. Oh damn. Oh yeah. What about Azazel? Is Azazel still cracking? Oh, I wish, but no. Sadly, I'll bring not. back Azazel. Then. I'd like there to you. see Azazel. Azazel was really good when Azazel was a thing. Yeah, you can make him a thing again because he's got an interesting backstory, kind of being like yeah. Sigmar's best friend. Then Once. being like, no. Once yeah. upon a time, and then yeah. becoming like the the arch prince. There was a time, and it, it it's gone now in the fluff. But Arzazel was 
the highest demon of Slanesh. He, uh, he was like the equivalent of um, Scarbrand, you know, to Korn. Mm. Nakari, um, right? Yeah, yeah. It's gone level. now. Yeah. It's gone now. I don't even think he's been mentioned in the background since God knows when. Well, if what they're doing here is just like emphasizing like, hey, we know you guys like playing Total War Warhammer, they'll mm. probably bring back Azazel because he's oh. a character in the game. They could bring back Valkyr. Yeah. Valkyr? The lady? Valkyr of the bloody. Yeah, she, she's yeah. still around too. She's still in the latest. Oh, she's still corn. around. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. She's still uh, very much part of the corn forces. Yeah. She's been mm. in the last... Mm -hmm. several books i think okay I've got, um i've got who two else could things bring that just popped oh, into my, my mind egrim oh, egrim van horseman yeah. on his dragon There's two things that popped into my mind oh, which i God. want to throw out there before we move on one is the realization that emmerich kemler is going to be around at this point because yes. he's the one that tried to make a zombie emperor to stick him on the throne so uh that's right <laughs> <laughs> Yes. No one, no one will notice. Yeah. But I can't no think if Krell know. would be around. <laughs> if, uh, oh, yeah, because Kemler and Krell do become Absolutely, a double yeah, act yeah. at one point, don't they? Well, but Krell's not... alive or is when Krell's, when Krell's dead? dead. I mean, Kr oh. Yeah. Okay, so maybe yeah. you could have Krell alive. Oh, that would be cool, because Krell was, was a champion yeah, of yeah. corn, wasn't he, when he yeah. was alive? Oh. There you go. Interesting. He could fight. He, he could fight Archeon. Archeon could kill him. Krell could yeah. bring him back. <laughs> In fact, I mean, one of the other characters who is is also like part of the Empire ostensibly is Egrim. He was the uh, the the sort of High Magister mm -hmm. of the College of Light once upon a time. Which means Nerds. he, this game could actually feasibly start with him wandering off and finding a dragon. Mm, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff they could play with here if they thought about it. If they went back to like you know the mm. old books and whatnot and looked into the background, they could really play uh, around here. It could be Warhammer fun. Warhammer Quest Adventures of Gotrick. Oh man, oh, wow. and Felix. Like happy hours. <laughs> Is that what, it's it's probably a little bit early to do Gotrick and Felix in the timeline, yeah, but you I can, think so? Yeah. You can you can, you can weave it in there. Be oh, around, but he wouldn't be a slayer. Yes. No, he'd be happy potentially. Young oh, man, yeah. that's it. If if I do play this, I'm going to run a dwarf army and just have one happy dwarf called Gotrek. It's like, oh. <laughs> you're not going to have Snorri. Not no, going to have happy things Snorri. Things happen to Snorri, and my heart can't take it. <laughs> Poor Snorri. <laughs> Snorri. Had enough happy to him. Snorri just. Uh, in fact, there should be a game where it's just Snorri gets a happy day and lots of fluffy pillows, and that that's the entire game. <laughs> Every game ends with him waking up and no, finding no. out it's not true. Snorri <laughs> needs to have a happy day. You leave Snorri alone. He's <laughs> suffered enough. Oh. The other thing I just noticed, by the way, was if you look at the snake skeleton man, if you really <laughs> zoom in on his face, somebody has been tracing from like Frank Langella's Skeletor. <laughs> he's got the little Frank Langella eyes in the middle and it Kind of freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you can kind of see it with the shading. Right. Yeah. So LVO, let's uh, let's boom into some LVO. Uh, what else oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, also, uh, we'll just quickly do this one. If you turn up at any Warhammer uh, Games Workshop type thing this year, any convention or big event, you can either get a really cool commissar or a really angry barbarian. Both are very very cool. And I yeah. will be getting that commissar when I go to Warhammer Fest in April, May, whenever it is. But Barbarian would make a good vampire for um 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 what do you call it? He would uh, really Warcry, would. which yeah, we'll be talking about in a bit. And uh, if you a want me to pick dude. one up for you, I shall. Oh, that's a nice that's idea. A... Uh, I don't have I don't have what it takes to make a wolf mm -hmm. head for him. <laughs> I actually have a couple of wolf heads from the Blood Bowl kit. So, yeah, if you want to pick it up, I can send you him and them. Oh, all right. You know. yeah. no, maybe. Yeah, I'll have to have a think maybe. about it. I'll have a, I'll have a, I'll have a little... I really like the Commissar as well. That is a fabulous yeah. Commissar, yeah. Yeah, I the Commissar is great. I love him. I think he's so sort of... He's exactly one issue, like what you one want. Issue, I, I can see his Bob eyes. Bob. I don't like it. You, you want that, the cap over his eyes, do you? Yeah, <laughs> cap should be lower. I should only see the nose and mouth. <laughs> He's all about the chin. I would <gasps> yeah. like 
to Judge invite Spiley. you in the imagination copter to follow me on a little oh. journey I went on when I saw this. Because my first thought was, mm -hmm. if Henry Cavill does get this 40k series off the ground, I now want Jason Statham to play this Inquisitor. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tell me you can't see Jason Statham in that Inquisitor, in that uh, Commissar. No, I, I no, I, I can't see J Jason Statham doesn't come across as um, no. refined as an inquisitor. He's too much of a of a <laughs> no. guardsman. Yeah, I have him as a I sergeant. Agree. I agree. I think it, yeah, as a guardsman, I could uh, definitely. That, that see miniature him. makes me think of yeah. Jason Statham. What commissar? Look at him. Look at this. Oh yeah, I'm commissar Statham. Hey. I, I think he need. I think a commissar needs to be a bit more well, of a. Uh, he he's. I mean, he's an officer, isn't he? So he needs yeah. to be more. They if you go to have a commissar, yeah. has to be played by Sean Pertwee. Oh, we get uh, yeah. whoever played Darling in in Blackadder. <laughs> guy. <laughs> it's yeah. Tim McHenry who plays Darling yeah. in Blackadder. <laughs> get him. <laughs> Blackadder, but Warhammer. There we go. Don't be revolting, he Darling. I like the idea. I absolutely love the idea of Commissar Melchard. I think that's no, a no, really good idea. <laughs> 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 Right, okay, LVO. Let's burn through the LVOs. So, uh, excellent <laughs> Cadian wit. <laughs> oh, speaking of things that make me, yeah, speaking oh, of things that make me laugh. Space. We've right, got silly so the first one. Breathe. Yeah, I was going to say we've got the the frigging ridiculous <laughs> space marines. I'm going right? to put my hand up. <laughs> I love Strike them. Force I Gaspers, the, I yeah. absolutely love them. <laughs> Me too. I, I'll be honest. I I I love them. They are <laughs> the stupidest things to hit the Space Marines for a long time. For a long, mm -hmm. long time. They look like they're carrying mm -hmm. big silly Nerf guns. Yep. And I love it. I I don't. I think it <laughs> looks way too out of place. It's so silly, oh, honestly. It's so wrong. silly. I do not I, think they're good. Know, <laughs> I can get not liking it. No, 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 no. That's not it at all. I, you know, I, I can get not liking them. I mean, really, I can. But they do make me smile. The, like the the absurdity of it makes me smile. I, mm. I, I can't help it. You know. Oh man. Do you remember back in the older editions where you just had a, a Devastator squad and you knew exactly what they yeah. did? I don't know what these do. <laughs> I've no I think this idea. is the problem with the, the the Space Marines at this point. They have so many units. I don't yeah. know what what each of them do by oh, looking at them. That is absolutely true. They The Space Marines have a real problem with that. And they have this problem with like saturation of different battlefield roles. So mm. you've got so many units in the elite slot, so many units in the in the uh, you know the the heavy weapons slot. It's really difficult to get a bead on mm -hmm. What do I take? What does that do? What does this do? Why would I take that over this? You know what? Yeah, yeah. It is a it is a problem. It is a real problem with the Space Marines, because of course they release new Space Marines every edition and yeah. often well into the edition. Uh, these guys, I've no idea. Those guns are silly. They're really silly. But I do want to model them <laughs> with little flags coming out of each of the barrels that say "ban." It's the <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. uh, you know the the rocket launcher parts. Why don't you take the the nipple missile parts out and replace them with like cats so they shoot yeah, cats at people? Anything like that. Anything like that. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, painting them really bright orange so they look like Nerf guns. Anything <laughs> like that. I mean, I'm so up for it. So up I, for it. Are these anti-personnel or anti-vehicle? Because the missile would make me think that they have some sort of anti-vehicle capability, but then they've also got a Gatling gun, which kind of supersedes the, the heavy bolter. It, it's odd, isn't it? They, it's hard it's to see what they're going to do. You're right. It's absolutely difficult to see like what what it's, they are for. It's the idea but of I still firing love. a Gatling gun and then shooting a missile out of the thing you just shredded with a Gatling gun. It's, there would be nothing left. Yeah. I mean, there is a thing for me with 40K where, I mean, it is, 
I mean, by its very nature, it's overblown and ridiculous. That's kind of part of the satire of the universe. That's how it's always been. These are another step up. It's so oh. ridiculous. Oh. And I kind of like it. I literally I spent like 20 minutes giggling to myself for the following reasons. Yeah. One. You know, I I particularly like the one. The guy who's with one hand mm -hmm. aiming the bolt pistol and then with the other is hefting this ridiculous bloody thing. <laughs> it's got a missile launcher, a Gatling gun, and there's pipes coming off it. Mm -hmm. And he's so overbalanced. Like the miniature, like the silhouette of the miniature is so overbalanced. Kind of love how stupid it is. It just it, and he's got like one tiny little <laughs> trigger on this big. It's so, so brilliant. If I you look it. at the missile gap, so gun thing, right? When they've got the flops open, yep. There's two eyes, a little red nose, and the Gatlin looks like a mouth. And yep. that thing, I am sure, taught me how to it's do the alphabet when I was a kid. That is, I am absolutely one hundred percent sure that that was a very early BBC character that was like. And now you do a B, up and round and round. And now a C, round. <laughs> Strangely enough, I think the concept of this unit could work mm. in the Tau. Like, you give this to a Tau, <laughs> yeah. not, not this design. You can't <laughs> save this design, fuck that. If you redesigned it so it was a <laughs> missile launcher and a Gatling gun weapon for the Tau, it would work. Because they're um, overgunned anyway, so yeah, yeah. non, they non have space been. marines. Come on now, <laughs> this is just making more space marines for the sake a of new it. Type of super heavy it armor. The missiles go on the shoulders, and he's, they're carrying a Gatling gun. That maybe oh, like you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. do Terminator equivalents, Adam. Yeah, exactly. I was, yeah, exactly. yeah, I was going to say, oh, exactly Terminators. That, yeah. Yes, um, just do Terminators. And that, that's that's <laughs> how you do it, you know. But having, the <laughs> yeah. I keep, I keep seeing the I mean, like that's just like swinging it round and I can't help but imagine that he just goes fuck it and just flings himself off his own feet it's just like I mean, like, in any, in any, like, realistic scenario, these guys would be <laughs> awesome in melee as well, wouldn't they? Because they could just like bludgeon anything with those things, you know? I would laugh so hard if there's no rules for these things to shoot <laughs> I mean, like, right, anything they hit with oh, those guns is going to die, absolutely. right? Like, physically hit absolutely. with them. It's, when I first <laughs> saw them, I thought for a second that the missiles were belt-fed, and I just, I lost it. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would, I mean, even 40k, that might be pushing it. But not, you know, insofar as these guys go, oh. maybe not by that much. To be fair, if if you did like a a, a dreadnought that had a belt fed missile it launcher, was, that yeah. would look really yeah. cool you and could work. Or, or do on a vehicle, yeah. you know, something big. I but think not, doing it on a dreadnought would be really cool. Belt. No the notion. Oh. It's so brilliant. I mean, uh, you know, it does make me laugh. I'll mm -hmm. be honest, it does make me smile. If it was an alternate Rabute Gilliman weapon. You know, where it was a belt-fed missile launcher yeah. again, and the missiles were carried round by like a little mm. um, cherub thing. All right, <laughs> yeah, all right. That can work. You feel sure. the same I way. See that? Yeah. If... The Redemptor looks good, though. Oh, yeah. I like the Redemptor yeah. with its big claws and its big pinchy hands. That looks nice. I mean, it is just a variant <laughs> of a Redemptor, though, but it's it's all right. Adam, Adam, Mister White, I think that would be brilliant. They should do that. Like, as when, a rule. He says you'd have to roll to see how far back the recoil would push the Marine backwards. I think that's a brilliant idea. I'm, I'm up for that. That should be a special rule for these guys. I think it would be fantastic. You know, for every time you fire, you've got to roll die six to see how far back the move it, the unit moves. I think that's, that's a brilliant idea. You could use that as a strategy if you run ahead of an yeah. objective yeah. and then you shoot, the, the gunfire could push you back onto the objective would, after you've been after in range. After shooting, that might yeah. be pretty good. That might, as a rule, that might actually be quite, you know, tactically useful. Yeah, stupid but fun. Stupid yeah. but fun. I'm kind of into that. More of that, if please. More these stupid were iron but fun. Hands, sorry, iron warriors. Would you still think they looked mm. as stupid, knowing how the iron warriors? <laughs> yeah, because the weapons still look shit. The thing is, with Iron Warriors, you yeah. can get away with it because chaos. You can, you know, you can have all of like the gribbly sort of like, you know, organic stuff. The guns would be bonded to yeah, their bodies yeah. yes, or erupting out of them or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
you can get away with it because chaos. <laughs> it's a bit more. <laughs> it's a bit more difficult on these guys. Oh yeah, I still love them. <laughs> Again, you, you probably could get mm-hmm. away with it if it was Iron Hands, because, yeah. like you say, you just do like you said the inbuild thing, yeah, but yeah. on yes. them, just less greebly. Paint them up as Iron uh, Hands. Yeah, I could kind yeah. of see that. Well, I, I mean, specifically, you'd need to have them like this melded to the flesh, like yeah. you say. Yeah, sort of like a, a replacing oh, limbs. No, no, yeah, I just realized yeah. something. So you see on the back of them, they've all got uh-huh. like, some of them have got the targeters. Right, yeah, everyone with the heavy weapons. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah a little the guy heavy who's got the single shot missile, yeah. who's also got the bolt gun, has a massive targeter, <laughs> which you normally only see yeah. on snipers. Is he meant to be the sniper missile? Launcher? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh He's no! A sniper <laughs> missile I wonder if we should yeah, follow this brilliant. trail of smoke back to see who shot the president. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still love the fact that he even bothers having a bolt pistol it's like why <laughs> it's like yeah I, you know I've just rolled this fusillade in my shooting phase I'm now going to roll the bolt pistol <laughs> funnily enough no no He's holster for the bolt pistol some of them no. have holsters this guy doesn't no. He's carrying oh, yeah. it by hand and yeah. one handing the missile launcher I mean, all the time Maybe it's his. Maybe it's his favorite weapon from when he was maybe. in a Neo fight. Maybe he's got some sentimental he attachment. Fight, to yeah. Walk, doesn't he? So, yeah, he does maybe actually. Just... Now that you mention it, yes, he yeah. does. Oh, he's a newbie. That's why he's, he's stupid. He's he just know what he's doing. Promoted because every other person had their arms fall off. Oh god, <laughs> it's uh, brilliant. I just, I, you know, I, the, I mean, the uh, ruptions yeah. these guys caused. When they, uh, uh, I, I, I kind of, I, I, I get it. I mm. like it. I think it's funny. And we haven't even <laughs> I talked think about it's the funny. ones at the front, like the uh, the ones with the the four tiny missiles instead of the two big ones. Oh god! Oh, it's brilliant. I, I just, I've been I just, looking forward to talking yeah. about these <laughs> since they arrived, and it hasn't disappointed. It's they are, they have made me no. laugh so much. They're very. There's, if you go down to very uh, the carousel of pictures, the second one along, with the uh, the guys with the tiny missiles and the Catlin gun, is it just me or does the open mm-hmm. flaps just look really happy? Like hello, this is. So- <laughs> they look like eyebrows. They look like, don't they? Oh my god! It yeah. looks like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Ah. Ah. That. That was. Fantastic! Yep, they are <laughs> was a so bit of a laugh. So stupid, I love them. So next up, uh, Vashtor the Archifane invades the Dark Angel's home turf. <sighs> this is this sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'd assume this is going to be in um, mm-hmm. Arcs of Omen Vashtor. Or, yeah? or very cool. As rumor has it, one of them is going to be Arcs of Omen, the Lion. Yeah, oh. this is so. apparently so. Yeah, this is one of the big, very, very, mm. very consistent rumors, right? That the, the the next big release for the Imperium and one of the things that's going to mark the end of Ninth Ed yeah. is the return of the Lion. And given that we've got Dark mm-hmm. Angels in a box set, I don't. I mean, we've got the new. Um, uh, yeah. Azrael there, of course. I mean, he looks bloody lovely. Same. I've always had a soft spot for Azrael. I like the Dark Angels a lot, you know. They are one of my favourite Imperial chapters. Um, and to see him, you know, crossing the Rubicon Primaris and... Is it actually go- Azrael, Azrael as well? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, wow. That's Azrael. That's him, the chapter master of the Dark Angels. It's Azrael having been primaris you know. <laughs> ah, okay. Gun. Yeah, I've, I've got a little bit of it. The, the shame then about this set is this is going to be the only way to get these two really important, cool characters for a while then, right? Yeah, probably. In a set that has two new models, and that's it, and the rest oh. is just kind of old stuff. Yep, that's true. That's, well, that's I, a shame. I, I that's a true. Um, I think I'm going to get it, though. <laughs> yeah, because you want the two really cool characters, don't you? Of course well, you do. Well, to be fair, those those Dark Angels Terminators, you know, they chaos up really nicely. <laughs> they really <laughs> do. Get scraping that Imperial iconography off and just, like, you know, putting, like, bits of chaos gribbly all over them. 
Mm. So it, it works. It works. Hang on. I think I've got an example knocking about here somewhere. Uh, I wonder if my George Zoom still works. We'll give it a try oh if you if you God. get the model. I... Oh. No, it's somewhere buried down oh, there, unfortunately. Okay. But they do. Like they the do. Take the, it from me. They uh, work. Terminator with the lightning claws has the little Native American flowers and uh, feathers and sacks and everything, which... Nice yeah. reference to their original background, oh, sure. which mm, no Everything else is a lie. They, they, they've all... Yeah, I know, right? they, they say that that's the lie, <laughs> and this is the truth. I think that uh, what they say is the truth is the lie, yeah. because they don't want to know about the gene stealer infection that they might have already had. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, it is the Dark Angels, isn't it? Everything yep. about yep. them is exactly lies that. and conspiracies. Exactly so why not? I mean, right? I really just want to do a like a why not Deathwing chapter, and it's all just tyrannid hunting Terminators, which apparently is what we're going to get. So yeah. Oh, why not? Yeah, why not? Go for it. Oh, I mean that that Azrael miniature. Have it, it you is. know? Look at oh, it it's is. so nice. That's lovely. That's really, really cool. Although, you know, it's not as good as I Bastor. hate the fact that the Primaris tower over then the again. Terminators that makes me so sad. <laughs> they, do. they really do, because those Terminators mm. are the old old scale ones, right? So they're they're, yeah. a, bit, they're a bit wee. They're a they, bit wee. God. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully are they, they are bigger than the cultists. Not not by much though. Not by much. Not by much. <laughs> You know, one of those cultists could happily be wearing that armor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I do like the cultists as well. I mean, my God, look mm. how big the obliterators are compared to them. Bloody hell. No oh, massive. Oh, oh, those new cultists for the the new Chaos Space Marines, they are yeah. fabulous. They are oh, they're really, so nice. Really cool. They've done such a good job of them. Particularly that mm -hmm. cultist command set that you can get. Hmm. Oh, I mean, I think me if you got there. that, like that set, and then rolled in some of the uh, Imperial Guard mm. parts, and then some of the um, the ones from Necromunda, mm. yeah, you'd, you'd end up with such a good look. Yes, yeah. Corpse Grinder, you that's would. what they were called. You Corpse would. Grinder Gang. And of yes. And now you've got Vashtor, of course, who is oh, that miniature. That's one of my favourite demon miniatures for a massive. long while, I can tell you. I. Yeah, yeah, he's bigger than I thought. I don't know why. I didn't expect him to be no, that big, I... but he's big. He's like Greater Demon, isn't he? It's basically well, like from looking Demon at that, Prince, Greater Demon it's, scale. It's at an angle, so it's a bit hard to judge. But he looks like he's about the same mm. size as the new um, uh, uh, Slash Greater Demon. Keeper of Secrets, thank you. Oh, the Keeper That's of Secrets. not coming to me at all. Uh, it looks yeah. like he's about that kind of size. Yeah. So big, yeah. He yeah, yeah, looks like he's a sixty-pound kit, basically. Which makes sense. I mean, he is. I mean, he's not quite at the level of the chaos gods yet. But according to mm -hmm. the, he is a power within the warp. You know, and mm. he's very, very powerful. He's worshipped at. He's like Balakor level. You know, worshipped as a god, as Balakor is, with a degree of independence from the chaos powers themselves. Mm -hmm. He brokers the great game. You know. Because he because he runs the Forge of Souls, the only neutral territory in the warp, he brokers the game between the Chaos Gods. He's basically the, the rules <laughs> lawyer. He's the games master. <laughs> it's yep, really cool. That's... He's the DM. <laughs> <laughs> that means you have to put like a little bag of cheese it's in his hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got to have a screen as well. Obviously, he can roll oh, those oh, dice. He does look too. like he's got a good dice rolling arm, hasn't he? Like... Yeah. He's got a good dice rolling hand there. He really has. I, I... Yeah. We do have a question in chat. What is hmm. the Void Dragon for someone who, who doesn't know? Oh, the Void Dragon is a Catan. It's a it's one of the old star gods. So there's it's weird. There are like there are different types of gods in the 40k universe. There are those that derive from the warp, and the ones that derive from the warp are shaped by like the thoughts and feelings and beliefs of sentient creatures. Then there are the other there are gods that are born in the material universe, and they are born from the physical forces of reality, and that's what the Catan are. Um, and the Void Dragon so, is one of them. A, a very simple answer would be the Catan were around there for so go. long that they ascended into godhood. For want of a better term. <laughs> 
kind of i mean they were they they yeah, are yeah. sincerely yeah. gods the Catan. they are um but they're not born from like the metaphysics of the warp they're born from material yeah. processes physical forces it's 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 very very peculiar but they're kind of like counterposed to the gods of the warp very 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 odd but there you are yeah, i'm just looking at the uh, the and also, they, they are like the gods of the warp, complete <laughs> bastards by all accounts. And then there's the Emperor who is good and kind and cares for everyone. Mm. Mm, yeah, I'm yeah. just, look, I'm just looking at the uh, redacted Ordo <laughs> Zenos. Redacted. Now, if it was the lion, would it be Ordo Zenos? Mm. No, yeah. it wouldn't. Auto Xenos is, is alien. So that is going to be an... I mean, I imagine that's not going to be the lion. Um, the yeah, lion yeah, yeah. will come at the very end, like of ninth end, you know. Mm. And I don't know what that could be. If it's Auto Xenos, I, I mean, I doubt it would be the introduction of like... Although there is there is some scuttlebutt that says that a new 10th yeah. ed is going to launch with a new race, a new alien race. Rudd, 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 um, Rudd, Rudd, I don't know. Rudd. It's very interesting. I mean, technically, if you're going to look at big Xenos players, I would say the Silent King. Hmm. Because uh, you know the Necrons could do with a bit of a, a bit of a <laughs> another push. Because push, <laughs> yeah. they've been forgotten yeah. since the beginning of the the edition. They have a little bit. Yeah, they have a little bit. Unfortunately, why the Silent King came back. Did we? No, there's lots of rumors. I mean, one of yeah. them is that he encountered something beyond the edges oh of the God. universe that was horrific, and he came back to, uh, to fortify, you know? Do you remember what we said? Do you remember what we... We came up with a theory. What's that? Right. Our theory Which was that he was, came back because <laughs> something chased him back. And we said that That's the next right, edition yes. is the introduction of whatever chased him back. If... If we've done it, if yeah. we called it four years ago. Oh God, that would be that would be fab. I mean, I I want kudos for that. If we did, <laughs> if we did call it, yeah. I want kudos for that. I can tell yeah, you, absolutely. I, I want like. a free set, pre edition. Yeah, absolutely, mm. Games yeah. Workshop. <laughs> Hop to Come it. On. Hop to it. I'll have Make some up for the curse city, please. Thank you very much. Say <laughs> so sorry to me personally for the curse come, city. Come round to the house on the yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice, actually. Yeah. Have to come out. I'd be down. Yeah, but I do want. You know, what could it be? Is it? Is it? Are they going to use it as an excuse to introduce a new would race? You, or would what? you introduce a new race they could. at the very end they of could. a addition to life? That's no. that's the thing. I wouldn't. That's mm. the thing. It would be. You know. It would be well, you, the beginning of midway. the next one. The only time I think the only time you do that is if if you're reintroducing something, yes, so it's like a yeah. big oh shit, they're back rather yeah. than uh, these are new things. So I'd assume this will be a relaunch of a a previous speed. Maybe, well, this well, this right? Maybe this is the two. right? Maybe this is the new this is what the, I'm the thinking new face of the is Turnids, yeah. Broken realms. Where did Broken realms end. Broken realms ended. What was the last Broken realms book? Uh, Teclis, wasn't it? No, I don't think it was. I don't think Teclis was, was the it last Teclis? one. Was it not? I can't remember off the top of my head. Kragnos, that's right. Oh, it was Kragnos, wasn't it? Yeah. It was Kragnos. That's yeah, right. it was Kragnos, the last yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> Kragnos, the end of worlds. Bye. <laughs> yes, who then just like, yeah, got tricked into leaping <laughs> through a magic door. <laughs> After some yeah, non-existent horse, yeah, dragons, really... <laughs> yeah, <I. laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's literally yeah, what happened. Through the magic door. Yeah, he might be the end of the world, <laughs> but he's just not smart. Leave him be. No, he really isn't. Yeah, he's got a and horse that brain. was it. That was it. He hasn't like yeah, he hasn't done no, anything. We're not going to go into that sort of box again. We've, yeah, it's because uh, if we do, no, I'll no, just no, get no, angry. No, 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 no. Right, so. So, oh, moving on yeah, then, oh, let's get into the Alwoods. For we have some new underworld forces coming. Uh, one is the uh, the Witch Elves. Yeah. Which, I'm going to be honest here, I'm not a huge fan of these. They're I don't bit, like Witch Elves. They're yeah. all right, but they're a bit generic, aren't they? They look like the previous kits. There's nothing... You know how... 
a lot of the time these these kits for the yeah. you know for the the smaller games yeah they're really characterized mm-hmm. right they they emphasize something different about the armies and the miniatures these look just like yeah. Yeah. they could come from the kits right yeah, it does. It does look like just like a yeah. kit you'd pick up for this army. No, no. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with them. They're very dynamic. They're really well put together. They look good. They look like what they are, you know. But I find the leaders in a bit of a generic pose because a yeah. lot of the witch elves mm-hmm. are in that one leg on a rock, holding yeah, something sort of, up or in front of them, jumping or yeah. leaping or something. Yeah. No, they they're, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Yeah, they're just a it's, bit. It's a dull. Shame. I think it's the masks. Just like the daughters think, of Cain. I think it's the masks that do it. Nah. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, they've not, no. they're not being touched really. The daughters no, of Cain. They've not, been kind of left since, with the same aesthetic, really. Not since the Broken Realms, really, when they, you know, they reintroduced mm-hmm. Morathai as the goddess Morathai. Make these more snaky, right? Yeah, um, totally. Snake mutants, like Introduce... they have a snake arm or a snake head or yeah. like a snake arm head. Introduce more of the Slaneshi elements, right? Because yeah. that's the thing with the Daughters of Cain, right? They were their souls have been plucked from the belly of Slanesh and reforged, but there's still that hint of Slaneshi corruption in them. So yeah, that that would be fun. It's a one-two punch here that's happened, which has made me cold on them. I don't like the masks. I think the it could be the mm. paint job. I'm not sure, but I think the masks kind of. <laughs> They give them a very old woman, bad soft sculpt look. I think it's the only way I can describe it. it because the yeah. way that the masks are, it kind of robs them of any character in the face. And because there's nothing really else going on with the rest of the mm-hmm. uniform, it means they look quite generic. The other thing is, if they would be doing things like um, handstands or, uh, you know, uh, basically a lot more acrobatic. Because you've got leaping, you've got the one that's got the net, yeah, which looks yeah. like she's leaping up over the net, and that's probably my favourite of the lot. If they, like the whip, um, mm-hmm. or the hair was on the ground and they were like leaping up backwards or something like that, it would, that might fix it, because it's, they just look a bit generic. Hmm. They do look a bit dull, don't they? It's it, it's not as exciting as some of the other yeah, sets. Absolutely, we've definitely. seen better. Yeah. Moving on to the yeah, next one, then. Definitely, it's a great big frog, and holy mother of God, do I love ah. this guy! Ah, it's awesome. It's I mean, wow! As an update for the Slan, that is yeah. spectacular. Yeah, it really is. I also like the fact he looks like he's about to hit the skink in the head with his stick. I. <laughs> he looks very curmudgeonly, doesn't he? He looks like he's annoyed, like he's been asleep for a couple of centuries and he's being mm-hmm. woken up by that skink. And, and he's his not frog's happy jumped off his it. hand. It's like, oh, my frog. <laughs> I'm expecting this guy to be like mm-hmm. a magical holocaust, you know, as they are, they, you know, <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, do you remember what, you mm. know, when they were originally introduced, the Slan mage priests, and they were the best psych, like best yeah. magic users yeah. in the game, bar not. Nothing could touch them. Um, yeah, I'm hoping for that, actually. Do you think they'll bring back Bretonius so then the frogs will have the <laughs> ultimate enemy, the French? <laughs> oh, dear. It wasn't just the frog, was it? There was uh, also um, stupid not uh, dinosaurs uh, yeah, riders yeah. and whatnot that were showing off as well, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There are the dino riders as well who are actually, I mean, I love these guys too. I love these mm-hmm. guys. They, they the are skink really riders, cool. yeah. Yeah. It's Those... the one thing that Mikey did that was right. These dinosaurs that aren't real look good. Right. Not real, but they look bloody good. You know what I like about them, though? They The designs of them take cues from recent revelations yep. about mm-hmm. actual dinosaurs. They've got feathers. Yeah. It's like, whoa! That, that They look amazing. These guys are beautiful. I would love to get this set to paint them up. Just for the you know, just for the crack, they are I gorgeous. I love looking. the expressions on the skinks. They are such shit-eating yeah. little bastard faces. I love it. The the oh the yeah. standard bear and his little smirk. Just oh that fucking oh you want to slap him? I love it. It's so good. No, I mean, <laughs> I I did not expect yeah. to a see updated lizard men stuff. 
and B, decide that this is probably some of the finest things nope. I've ever seen. Um, I love them. I think they're absolutely top notch. I'd say the shields are maybe it's, a little, little dull, but yeah, I, I that, certainly yeah, like. I certainly didn't expect this this amount of stuff for their re-release, yeah. um, but I'm very, very happy that they've done it. I'm very happy. Um, you've got mm -hmm. like the new Saurus Warriors as well. And you know, they're great as well. Yeah. They look a lot beefier, a lot mm. bigger, beefier than they used to. And like the, 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 the intricacy of the detail on these guys is incredible. That yeah. standard bearer again who's almost got like a mm -hmm. Necron style detail going on. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I like these yeah. guys. I like these guys a lot. And they've redesigned the heads technically now for the Saurus. This is the now yeah. standard Saurus head design rather than the kind of standard, what I would call yeah, standard yeah. lizard man from back yeah. in. The they look a bit more distinct, mm -hmm. don't they? They look a more bit more dinosaur -y. Yeah, more dinosaur -y. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I love these guys. Again, mm -hmm. I could see just getting them to paint for the, the crack of it. I, they look lovely. I like the fact yeah. they don't have swords. They have twatting sticks. <laughs> All of them have twatting sticks. <laughs> yes. That's Absolutely. Fun. Yeah. Even the drum bearers, uh, the, the, it didn't look like that's for the drum. It just looks like he bonks people on the head that's with it. That's exactly what it looks like. That's exactly yeah, what it I'm... looks like. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very into this. I've got to say, there, there I, a... I'm very excited by these guys. It doesn't super no. lean into the space aspect, which no. Griff and you guys have always talked about, but it's if you true. like lizard men, this well, looks like a solid think... update to, to that it, specifically. It does. And that's fine. That's fine. You know, yeah. they've done it well. I mean, what they've done, there's no doubting like the quality. They've done it really, really mm -hmm. well with these guys. Mm -hmm. They look quite big as well from these yeah photographs these guys look like they're you know they're quite stormcast size probably i guess thinking, yeah and they, they, they've yeah. kind of backed off from the Very memories nice. of saurus warriors being teleported down from the ships and they've gone in no <laughs> they, they've kind they're of they're not um, ghosty thingies anymore you mean they still exist but there's also birthing spawning pools now kicking around <laughs> some all the realms so Died. Oh, they actually say here almost all Seraphon come in two varieties yep. the flesh and blood coalesced and the phantasmal starborn. Yep. So you can have mm. either. They've, that's really clever, actually. They've just rewritten yep. them so that you can have whatever yep, you know. like. That's right. Brilliant. You're fine by me. Cool. Absolutely fine Why by not? Me, then right? What you have on the, on the uh, battle, on the tabletop, works a hell of a lot better with the background. And good God, these new Saurus warriors are just the sex, yep. aren't they? The. They're really good. I mean, they, it's, you a, know. it's a good yeah. start to kind of refreshing the line. There's obviously just a lot left to do for the, the lizard men. They've got so many, yeah. again, mm -hmm. so many units that need to be updated. Like it's, so many of the Age of Sigma. Yeah. Some yeah, of the kind of guys. Hello, are doing. I, yeah. <laughs> can you see, Andy, these lizard men heads, not all of them, but some of them, being put onto Tyranids to make really cool looking Tyranids? Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Skinks, I can see that working. Skinks, you could definitely get away with. Yeah. They, they look, they kind of have a tyranny thing going on anyway. Well, the Sauruses could be like mini mm -hmm. warriors, kind yeah. of. That yeah, would work. You yeah, it. you could definitely get away with it. Yeah, just yeah, bore out yeah. the eyes a little bit, or fill them in. Yeah, I think that would work. Yeah, very nice, very yeah. nice. That's kind of exciting, actually. I'm really pleased. I'm really, really pleased for the. Uh, the Seraphon players I out there. Sure have... <laughs> I'd laugh. I'd laugh if they put the Screamer <laughs> Killer into this army. <laughs> that that they just fun. they just like really poorly glue a dinosaur head onto the front of it, and they're like, <laughs> "It's a new unit. Don't worry about it." So, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, I'd be I'd be very happy. <laughs> so looking at the roadmap for Age of Sigma, Beast of Chaos, Gloom, Gloom Spite Gates. Mm -hmm. Then we have an Order Battle Tome. Chaos, chaos, oh. death, death. Oh, then the Seraphon. Yay! Um, I like death. I'm not entirely sure what any of this will be. I'm going to guess that one of those deaths is the Ossiarch Bone Reapers getting their uh, their new book out. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, one one of them might yeah. be the Soul Blight Grave Lords. So, like Blight. they're not getting anything yeah, new. Yeah. It's just like here's a yeah. new book from. I would imagine that's most I of the death assume. ones. 
yeah, the soul blight, I imagine, is a, is a safe bet for these and, guys. I mean, I think we can make the assumption if we're getting 10th edition for 40k this year, probably most of these are just going to be here, the new rules. Maybe you get one, you, one oh, unit, yeah, like a we'll character, be, and that's character, it. Definitely. Yeah. Especially and, for... Yeah. That's why there's you know, five books yeah. in the summer, because it's like, here are the rules. Yeah. There you're done. There Fuck you off. are. <laughs> get on with it, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, uh, should we uh, talk uh, about some more uh, yeah, Age yeah. of Sigma? <laughs> I mean, chaos. I mean, the the up and coming nah. chaos books are not difficult yeah. to predict either because there's only two. <laughs> there's only two they've got to do. There's the the yeah. the, the blades yeah. of corn and, and the hedonites, right? Yeah, yeah they'll be the exact same. complete ranges. Just to so. Get them out and uh, up you go. out. There, there might be a new character or mm -hmm. something else for them. Although you know. Exactly, and given the quality oh, no. of the Chaos books thus far, can't you wait, can't really wait cool. to get my Heater Knights. Right. If you're going to release a new character for each of those armies, put a box out with them against each other. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. God, Heater Knights versus Blades of Corn? That would be a good way oh, of selling yeah. them. Yeah, makes sense. Makes mm, perfect sense, so. obviously. That would be a really good thing to do. But Okay, oh, back to the Gnarlwood, for we have some new Warcry. Um, right, um... Oh, um... Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is uh, how you do it, right? Holy shit, is this just... This is top of the game stuff, like, isn't it? Yeah. Completely yeah. new aesthetic for the vampires, again. They're introducing a new, another aesthetic. This right. is how you do it, right? Do the vampires look like the vampires from Nightmare Before Christmas? <laughs> One of them does, yeah. Actually, yeah. Like the now, faces. That now that you've mentioned it, yeah. they do a wee bit. Boys and girls of <laughs> they every do a wee bit. age, wouldn't you like to see something strange down in Narwood? Then you'll see, and the trees are covered in meat. Meat tree! I love meat trees. Yeah, meat, meat tree! Um, yep. Yeah. Slanesh really loves meat trees. Yeah, oh, oh, always yeah, rooting around believe. for meat trees. That's oh boy! Yeah. Oh, yeah, rooting. That's, that's a word with multiple <laughs> meanings. Um, oh. <laughs> these vampires are the fucking shit. Yeah, that werewolf. They're pretty cool, aren't they? Yeah. That that the oh, werewolf. My. Oh. They've done werewolves before mm -hmm. Games Workshop many moons ago, like long time ago, and they've never been any good. That is brilliant. It yeah. kind of looks like almost bat-like as well, which yeah. is kind of nice. It's very it's live. That, that nice sort of spindly, almost like, yeah, it's ee, it looks a bit wasted, doesn't it? You know, mm. I like that. I like that yeah. a lot. And its yeah, face absolutely. sculpt is fantastic uh, too. But even like the just the normal everyday vampires, the armor and stuff that they've got, that sort of <laughs> bone yep. meat samurai feel. It's so It's really nice, isn't it? I, it's really nice. So I mean the whole thing yes. with these guys is they're vampires from Gur, aren't they? Mm, so they've Rebel got beats. um They've got like bestial tendencies, yeah. which is really, really I'm nice. Hot. A Skurgan True Blade. I can honestly say I was absolutely blown away by these guys. And the, the guy, I, this is a really weird one. The guy with the hood and his little bat friend, right? Um, I'm going to call him Homeless John. And he, yeah. in his giant hand, because it looks like he's <laughs> slowly <laughs> turning into the wolf or, or something. Uh, I mean, that's such a subtle, but yeah. such a great yeah. thing to, to put onto him. Um, and then you've got the bare feet and this yeah. really emaciated torso. Oh, God, it's just gorgeous. Eh. It's very mm. good. There's something really wild about these guys, you know? They look like feral vampires, don't they? And I, and I like the background that. I the, like that a lot. They hunt the great beasts of the realms, gorging themselves on the primal energies, you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That's the shit I Very want. Very nice. I want vampires that exist. They don't want people. They yeah. don't want animals. They want fucking god beast blood. Yeah. Mm. The great beasts. Yeah. And then, I mean, like, the... the uh, 
the Bloodbound that are opposed to them, they're lovely too. What a lovely yeah. idea. These guys worship yeah. Karanak. The, the big guardian the of, of the, uh, the So that's, of their, that's yeah. their symbolism. Yeah, brilliant idea. I love the uh, the corn lord mm. who's got the mask that's like a flesh hound. He he's a corn berserker, like waiting oh. for not even that much changing. Stick a backpack on him, jobs are good. And yeah, right. he's done. Don't yeah. even bother. I mean, just stick him down. It's he's the, fine. The two, um, two guys in the yeah. like the face, the fanged faces coming out of, the, of their own face. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I know the masks, but yeah. it just it's so well done. Um, and the guy on all fours, I. Yes, I like that. I yeah, like that a just, lot. That's very corny, never... isn't it? <laughs> he thinks he's a For dog. A Bless him. That, um, <laughs> that foot that he uh, has coming out of the back of his uh, back of him, uh, backside of him. I thought that was a tail originally, and I was just like, "Is he turning into one?" <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, no. It's his foot. Um, but yeah, these honestly. It's one of those things when a new Warcry gets announced, there's always you like one team better than the other. Yeah. Um, in this case, yeah, I think both of them are absolutely <laughs> smashed out the park. <laughs> Both really good, right? I can honestly sit here and just go, I, I want yeah. this. I, I want this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely set. It's just a, a genuinely lovely set, yes. and also the the terrain is good too. Yeah, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It looks very yeah. gurry. It's a uh, scene it appropriate. Does. Yep, very much. The only so. thing I'd like like is maybe if the map mm -hmm. was more swampy looking. Yeah. I think that yeah, would be a yeah, bit that. nicer instead of just kind of generic uh, earth ground texture. But yep. it's fine. You know, nothing wrong with it. It's a it, again, it's oh, another yeah. strong showing from Warcry, yeah. right? Just it's the first time that I, I've liked a full team. Usually, you you mm -hmm. said that usually there's a team you don't like and there's usually, a team you like. For yeah. me, there's usually a team I like, but there's usually like 20% uh, of the models I don't like, like you two you of them or three yeah. of them. And yes. I like the whole all of the vampires here. I think they're all like, good. This it, would be a set I would get. Honestly, I yeah, likewise. would even be tempted to try and work out a way of using a couple of these sets to make a, a Soul Blight Grave Lord's army. Yeah. You know, yeah, easy, oh, easy, stuff. easy, oh, yeah. easy. I mean, there are so many units. I mean, what are the? Is it the the, the vampires that yeah. are werewolves, effectively? That mm. yeah, yeah ready just made, them straight right? In. Just it's... Oh. drop no, them straight really. in. Don't need I mean, to do a thing with them. I, honestly, I really like the sword like grave lords. I've really, really come to like them. I think the um, mm -hmm. uh, the mother of nightmares uh, is just a, an amazing character, and the the yes. idea of how those weird mm -hmm. monster vampires see themselves and have actually quite a lot of nobility yeah. about them. Yeah, I like that too. I, I particularly like. Uh, I can't remember the name of the blood. Is it the Valkyr? The, the ones head. that are the like that are the. Yeah, they're the ones that are werewolves. Effectively, I love the notion of them. The fact that their mm -hmm. vampirism doesn't derive from Nagash. That's really fascinating to me. It comes from like the, the spirits that they worship, the, the animal spirits of the realms. Yeah. That is really yeah, cool. Just... God damn it. I, I would never have thought that the vampires would be an army that I started looking at and going, I really want to do that. A, he a heavy amount yeah. of I like what they've yeah. done with them, and I really like the way... I like the way it echoes what happened to the undead early on in Warhammer, when you had this dissemination mm -hmm. into the vampire counts, right? And the vampire bloodlines. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. An awful it's just taking lot. that to the nth degree, isn't it? Lot. And really running with the idea of how the bloodlines work. Yeah. Like, really yeah. going like hell for leather with it, right? Doing away with like, the slightly duller original vampire bloodlines and expanding mm -hmm. into something a bit more mythological. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I mean, there's only two that survive now, aren't there, from the original bloodlines, and those are the, the Lamians yep, yep. and the Von Karsteins. <laughs> and Karsteins, the Von Karsteins right? are all sorts mm. of fucked up. It's like a vampire version oh, yeah. of incest at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, mm. Hey, you know. Love thy mother, I love thy yeah, father. I'm to take that literally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this isn't Wolverhampton. Uh... 
<laughs> uh, we'll always throw in a Bloody joke hell. about Wolverhampton. Uh, so, two really quick ones then. We've got a big tank. Yep. As it's a big, big tank, tank in Horus Heresy, it's a it's big tank. Big. How big? It's a phallically big. It's How a big, big tank. Yeah, it is actually one of the more phallically big tanks, mm -hmm. but it's oh, a it's an Iron Warriors tank. Yeah, very much so. It would it would I'm, work I'm very much it's, in it's Iron just Warriors not colors. The, uh, yes, penetrator heavy tank, looking like the penetrators. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's it's a big tank. <laughs> I, w I would say from my personal view, I don't think it looks very cool because mm. of how, just how silly it looks. It's it just is. a Land Raider with three guns sticking out the front of it. It's a big tank, isn't it? You know? Yeah. There's a big I've, tank. I've, I've, big I've, seen, I've seen cooler tanks. Uh, this is not one of the cooler. Yep. It's what it is. You know? Like the Roggle Dawn. The Roggle Dawn was pretty good. The Roggle Dawn. The Roggle Dawn. <laughs> the one that didn't have a bottom to it. The one that had no bottom. So yes, you could actually I... <laughs> put like feet coming out of the bottom if you wanted yeah. and flint stones. I, I, I thought that was a better it's, looking yeah, tank. That was fun. <laughs> and then finally, some kill team. Uh, so, Soul Shackle. Once again, strong, strong bloody showing, right? Yeah. yeah. Smaller game systems. I mean, Adeptus Arbiter, right? Yep. Everyone loves the Adeptus Arbites, right? They've been around for a Who long time. I don't the, actually know who they they're the are. Cops. They're the cops. Oh. Oh, okay. They're Imperial Police, is what oh. they are. The Adeptus Arbites are the law keepers of the uh, of Imperial planets. They're they're the judges. They're mm -hmm. the you know like the 2080 <laughs> Mega City judges. They were based on them originally. Yeah. They're effectively Judge Dread. That, oh, that explains 100% why mm -hmm. they look the way they do. Why they look, they very, look much like it. very much like Grudge Dread. Right. Yes. Uh, I'll be right. Never heard of now, it. Don't worry about it. It's different. Yeah, don't problem. worry about it. Right? There's don't one worry of these that goes yeah. even further down that, uh, that route. Do you guys know about martial law? No. The comic. The TV show? So martial law <clears throat> was created because by somebody who thought Judge Dredd wasn't hard enough. Uh, I, pretty much, <laughs> it wasn't pretty much martial enough, law yeah. is a difficult <laughs> read. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, because I don't think it is bad, but it's a difficult read. It gets bad. It, they're, they're, yeah, after a point, it gets mm -hmm. un unreadable for multiple reasons. But there is a singular okay. guy, and it's the guy with the studded full plate mask and the great big truncheon who looks like martial law and it, it yeah oh the bdsm guy and, yeah and all he needs is the huh. bit yeah oh with the cuffs he's got cuffs that's very cool and I'm, I'm that's gonna very go out cool that they somebody as a joke went well we all know that these guys look like judge dread let's get one that looks like martial law yep that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I mean, these literally. I mean, they, they make no bones about it. These yes, were based on the judges from 2000 were. AD when they were originally created. You know, they made no bones about it. Um, they even have like the yeah. one shoulder with the eagle. I mean, like it's mm. it's, it's it's overt, <laughs> isn't it? You know. I'm shocked they don't have one guy who's very <laughs> slightly Stallone looking. Yeah. Right. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> But it's nice to see them back and to see them updated. It's, and they're really good. They look great. Unless you shit at panel lining, you're going to have a hard time yeah. making these look nice if you do them in black. <laughs> yeah. That's a... <laughs> but that's the problem with their, a fully black um, like palette, isn't it? you got to be yes. good at panel lining to get the shading looking nice. It's... But they do look good. The, the Evan Metal team make it look nice. They do make it look good. I mean, black is very difficult to paint because it always ends yeah. up coming out looking blue or grey. You know, But these guys, I mean, they've done a great job. They look fantastic. Really, a really nice... When was the last Adeptus Arbites release? It was... I, it was... I, well, I'd never heard of them. Yeah. It must have been the original ones, the Adam, right? Set. So no, way, yeah. way back when. Oh. Was that Necromunda? Because no, I can't imagine these being in like they normal. No, they, Guard, they were in yeah. 40k. Were they? They were in wow. 40k, yeah. yeah. Part ah, of the Imperial yeah. Guard, yeah. And I think you could yes, take them as Sisters of Battle originally as well. Uh, I'll see if I can That would make find. sense. But it was a long time ago. I remember them I've coming out. I've got a feeling out. that there has been like I mean, a smattering mm -hmm. somewhere... 
Yeah. I'm... Oh, has there as part of a, you know, maybe, maybe Andy is right, maybe in one of the other game systems, you know, like Necromunda. Because there are Arbites on, Decromun on Necromunda. There oh, are Arbites yeah, yeah. on almost every Imperial world, yeah. you know? Um, They're I'm the cops, right? I look right? now, but I, I can't really, I can't see any other release for them. But I'm sure there was. What do you think of the doggo? He is awesome. I was going to say, the doggo is great. His name is Bruno. I just... I... I just. Did they have I a mean, special, like, silly name for them? Uh, the dogs. Well, they weren't part of the Adeptus Arbites originally, but I'm sure uh, they do now. Okay, because I, I thought, like, the Adeptus <laughs> Dogicus would the be the same for them. <laughs> Goodest boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I think it's neat because I like the idea that someone blows your dog up and they're like, no, I love no. my dog so much. I'm yeah. going to make him a robot dog now yeah. and he's going to kill you now for killing him. It's a thing, though, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, Is it? It can either be used for like service animals like this or for people who just don't want to let their dog go. Mm -hmm. So as the dog gets older, it just gets more and more right. cybernetic. <laughs> I'm Brilliant. shocked that they haven't added like a gun or a flamethrower yeah, to the dog. Yeah, back or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> that that's for the Imperial is... Guard. Maybe the Imperial Guard do that. that Actually, no. The Imperial fabulous. Guard probably have like implemented yeah. the bomb dogs from <laughs> World War Two. I just, I just like the fact that its handler has like a leather leash, as though that's gonna do anything. Look at this the, thing. The, the dog knows. The dog remembers right. from when it wasn't a robot. In all honesty, <laughs> this dog does not need a He is the gun goodest boy. Because that thing has big metal jaws, and when Bruno comes running at you, your only thought, yeah. your only thought is going to be, oh well, looks like it's curtains for me. I had a good run. The... Yeah, I, I don't mean, know. I, I wonder if it's just like a death mask and it just headbutts you to death. It just headbutts just, you, yeah. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it headbutts your kneecap so your knee breaks in inward so you fall to the floor and then it just keeps headbutting your face I mean, until it's smushed. It's a whole lot of dog and it's a whole lot of metal <laughs> on a whole lot of dog, isn't it? So yeah. it's going to hurt it's a, it's when a, that hits It's you. a big fucking dog as well. He's a big boy. Oh, he's a big he's old great. boy. Which means that yeah. we now have... Oh, I can yeah. see that being miniature of the year, actually. You know, when we do the fluffies, I that's like going to be in there. I'm really worried that there's going to be, like, uh, a tournament somewhere in 40K or for Games Workshop where they only allow the, <laughs> the pet animals to fight. <laughs> it's going to be, like, Blood Bowl, but it's going to be, like, Blood Pets. Brilliant. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Crab versus dog. Who wins? Crab versus dog versus little oh, servant cleaning the sword. <laughs> Got a dog in uh, an earlier version of Kill Team as well, didn't we, with the breaches? Was it with the breaches? I think it's actually oh, earlier yeah, than God. that. Mm, so yeah. This yes, means that there are now two cyber mastiffs out there. I I I, I want to start like Ooh. a, a dog only army. <laughs> I want doggo army. I want to I want to see how many points <laughs> it is for a dog. <laughs> maybe that maybe that's what that last arcs of omen will be. Arcs of omen dog. <laughs> box. No. box of omen. Hey! Obviously, <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Can we have like uh, an Easter special model of like a chicken and a rabbit? One's a cybernetic <laughs> chicken, and the the rabbit and the chickens are ride like the chicken riders from back in El day. El Pollo Diablo. Yeah, that oh, could be the Easter special. There you go. It would, it would have to be a demon chicken. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you I said El Pollo. Warm, it just clicked. Yeah. I'm, I'm, El Pollo I'm Diablo. Idiot. Yeah. Yeah. It just looks like a normal chicken, just with red eyes. <laughs> like that one episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog where the chicken comes from space. Oh, it would have to be a Lord of Change, obviously. <laughs> I thought you could have said Lord of Chickens. <laughs> a Lord of Chickens, yeah. A, a Lord, Lord, of Lord of Change. A Lord of Change yeah, in brilliant. the Warhammer Quest. Um, and he is an actual Lord of Change. He has all the powers of the Lord of Change. He's just very tiny. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. He's just really small, yeah. Oh, Mr. White says the, uh, the, the police officer. I'll just say police officers. Uh, we're back in 1994 and before yep. uh, 91. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there was an. There you go. I actually forgot wow. about the 91 release. There we go. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely correct there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember the 94 release. Yeah. Oh, was... I do remember them. Yeah, I've thrown a, a picture into like the, uh, the group chat. From 2000. Um, not the Discord one, because that would have made sense, wouldn't it, Adam? Jesus fucking Christ. But yeah, I. <laughs> so these things. But no, those are lovely. 
Also, some smelly space elves in the box, I suppose. They're you can smell they're mouth. Hari. Yeah, smelly they're space elves. They're <laughs> lovely. I mean, they're a bit generic. Again, you know, they look a bit like, apart from one or two examples, they look pretty much like, well, you know, cabalites from the box. Yeah, they're um, fine. But some of them are really lovely. I love, um, where is he? The one with the bird. Oh, I like that. the one with the tube in his <laughs> nose. <It's so> silly. <laughs> Yeah, he's got some combat drugs going I, on yeah, there. I see mm-hmm. the one you're talking about. I really like his bird. His bird's yeah. very cool. I also like the one with the yeah. hair. The one with the hair is really cool. I'm I like sure that. I met oh, him yeah, yeah. at a goth night in Newcastle in the early 2000s. I was going to say. Yeah. Isn't he in that video where they're all dancing <laughs> oh, yeah, under the bridge with gas masks on? Thomas that the Tank video. video, yeah, a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why does one of them have like a almost space marine um, emperor styled uh, Roman styled mask on? It's it's uh, on the same image that has the guy with the long hair. Oh, it's from the uh, the racks, I think. Ah, uh, it, it it reminds me of like a Roman style design, almost like I, some of the blood angels. Um, I actually you know, thought jet he stole boys, a face whatever they're called. I think you can infer. <laughs> I think you can infer that he's had some work done by the homunculi. It does look. I like think that's what you meant to infer from that. Ah, okay. growing out from underneath the armor. Mm. Wow, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Mm. That oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Maybe that's the thing with him. Yep. But no, they're nice. They're very nice. You know, they're they're not as distinct as the Arbites are. They look a no. bit too much like the Cabalites from the box. Um, but there's some nice stuff in there. There's some nice. Th- oh, I've just noticed the guy. You're, yeah, the one with the wire in his nose and the injector pistol. That's right. Yeah, that's guy from Dune. <laughs> that's interesting. So he looks like an agent of the Hemunculi, like he's testing chemicals or. Are something. these all new models, or is this like the Necrons, where it's updated ones like this, and you sprue to just slap onto dudes? I think so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Some of them do look very much like the models from the, the Cabalite the, sprue, but the I don't know. The guy with the tube up his it's, nose. It's, we will call him Lord Chewbacca. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The one next to him. Now oh. he looks <laughs> like a really old miniature. Yeah, exactly. He does. That. Yeah. I think the head, he's... right? Yes, I think. Yeah. I think that one mm. is just you know from the sprue. Good, because I'd be really annoyed if it was only the Necrons that got put in these uh, box sets, and it was only them that had yeah. the old yeah. models with a slight update yeah. sprue. I'd be like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> that would be mean, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be ah oh, typical. But yeah. Drakari, I, I'm always excited yeah. about Drakari. I like Drakari. Mm-hmm. So would you buy the set, George? Because you kind of yeah. like the policeman. Would you? Would Actually, you take? Would you pl- take the police officers and make them like uh, uh, cultists? Mm. I'd make them into racks. Oh, I'd okay. turn them into racks for the uh, the Drakari. <laughs> that would you know- be fun. I actually don't think I'd do anything that with them. Be... I think I'd just have them as a I really like them. Yeah. Yeah, they are nice. They're a really, really lovely thing. And I can see them turning up somewhere in 40k, definitely. Maybe as part of the Imperial Guard, you know, or the, yeah, the Sisters yeah. of Battle. They'd be good in the Adeptus yeah, Solaritas. The They'd work. I like the fact you know? that they've all got nice little button-up shirts underneath their armour. Mm-hmm. They look the very boys. smart. Right, yeah. well, that's uh, that's the lot. That's everything that we were going to talk about today. And that's been quite a long show. Fabulous, fabulous. Was. That was I, great uh, fun. I thoroughly that enjoyed was great yeah. fun. I honestly thought that nothing was going to beat the giant Primaris guns, but fucking Barks of Omen, that's... That that's got me. That's got me good. <laughs> yeah. I, although you know, I just I can't oh, get over this space. I'm so glad. That, brilliant. I'm so glad we're all on the same <laughs> page there and it. just laughed hysterically at them for twenty minutes. Um, so yeah. So with all that being said, then Andy, where can people find you if they desire your blood? Ah. Uh, well, I'm dead, so they can't have it. I was going to say, Andy hasn't got it. Out. Has it? It's all I'm congealed, sorry. or you know. Mm-hmm. Oh the, right, I see. I'm I'm more cultured than that. They're in little baggies in the fridge. <laughs> you know. Uh, 
Oh, I ate it off. Better than a jar, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and YouTube as Decayed Andy, as in a rotten corpse, uh, rather than a 10 year period. Um, where uh, Twitter, Decayed Andy. I'm also on the Moonbase 2 podcast where I talk about Transformers each and every week. And you can find me in the same places apart from on YouTube, which is Moonbase 2 Excellent. Transformers podcast. And George, where can people find yeah. you if they wish to summon you under a dark moon sky? Uh, you can find me over at the YouTube channel, Exaggerated Elegy. Um, there's also a new YouTube channel doing the rounds at the moment, uh, part of the My Life in Horror project, which is called Our Lives in Horror, which is going to be interviews with various people from the horror creative community. So writers, filmmakers, artists, etc. There's several videos up there now. Um, you can find links to all of my published fiction over at strangeplaygrounds.com and also at my Amazon author page, which is George Daniel Lee. And if you fancy a chat, you can come and find me over at Twitter at uh, Enigmatic Elegy. As for myself, you can find me on Twitter at Grofflock, and you can find this show on Twitter at The Fluff and Hammer. You can find me on Instagram under AD Nickel. You can find the show on Instagram under The Fluff and Hammer. You can find me on Facebook, but you've really got to try. You can find the show on Facebook under the names The Fluff and Hammer <laughs> as a group and as a page. Come and join us. We have a Discord as well. The Discord is lovely. The Discord is full of people telling me not to buy beast box <laughs> why were they telling you not to buy them by not i'm saying they were trying to get me to buy them but in it in, in, in a roundabout way oh okay that makes oh, oh, right, right. Right. Uh, it right. weren't you <laughs> I was like, I don't believe people wouldn't want you to spend money. That doesn't sound like the internet. <laughs> but no, uh, the, uh, the Discord like is uh, such a, a really lovely place. It's like, whenever I, uh, I... I've never had to really step in as an admin in that Discord. It's always just been a load of people talking in a nice way, having fun, being sensible. And it's, it's lovely. Makes me happy. God, God. You should write to some sort of like Internet Guinness World Book of Records or something because mm -hmm. that surely is a unique well, it's one phenomenon. Of the things I love about the Fluff and Hammer on in general the is there's only been twice in its entire existence I've had to get yeah. the banner. Oh my around. god! And in seven in seven years, that's not yeah, bad it's going. Yeah, it's a good community. Not bad going at all. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a good community. Uh, you can also find my community. work at adnickel.weebly.com. Uh, where the first uh, book of Eremus is out now to download, and I am at work on the second one. I have just done a roadmap of all of the, the concepts I have in my head, because I wanted to see what, how many there were, and uh, there's eight. I've got concepts for eight games. Wow. It's a lot Woo! of work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> but one of them involves a um, a card based monster making mechanic. Oh, that sounds fun. Where so when you enter a room and you've got monsters to fight, it's not just ten rats or whatever. It's you pull out one card and then attributes depending on the monster's level. Sounds fun. That sounds so, like a, a fun. Uh, no two monsters yeah, of the same. Fun mechanic. I like that. So uh, yeah, no one steal original <laughs> idea. <laughs> nah. and with all that being said. We are out of here. Thank you so much to Andy and George. Uh, uh, my pleasure, man. Always. <laughs> and thank you so much to the live studio audience and to the dead yes, studio indeed. audience. And thank you to everyone at home who's been listening, if indeed you're still Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.